Hey everybody, welcome back. It is another Gravity Ace Dev stream. It is uh, December 11th, Saturday morning. It is 6.27 a.m. <laughs> it's 6.27 a.m. here. And, uh... Beautiful California, welcome. Wherever you are in the future, welcome. Um... What the heck is that? All right. I need to warm up. I need to warm up by procrastinating a little bit. <laughs> hey, Seed Snipes. 328. Uh, that means you, my friend, are in... Uh... God, math. You're in, you're in GMT plus one? <clears throat> Somewhere in the middle of Europe? Are you in Sweden? Are you in Germany? I don't know all the time zones. Berlin, very good. Guten Tag. <clears throat> Guten Tag. Willkommen. Thanks for joining me. Look, I've missed a few. I was busy this week. This week was a busy, busy week. The giant whale has decided your submarine is its next meal, and it's much faster than you are. I've got to record this. I want to record uh, doing a couple of these and put them on YouTube and see if anybody's interested. I'm learning Go. I'm using this to help me learn Go. I think other people might be interested in learning Go with me. I don't know. We'll see. What is this one? A swarm of crabs zooms in to rescue you. They seem to be preparing to blast a hole in the ocean floor. Of course. Massive underground cave system. Just beyond where they're aiming. Oh, they each have their own tiny submarine. Okay. Crab submarines can only move horizontally. Alright, these are the horizontal positions of each crab. Does that mean they're one-dimensional? Okay. Uh, okay, so you have to line them all up in the same horizontal coordinate. Using as little fuel as po- oh, okay. This is like finding local minima or something. Or a global minima, right there. For all these guys. Well, you have a set of numbers. Yeah. You'll need to find the minimum... What is this, like... Maybe this is a minimum... Least common divisor problem? Greatest... I don't know. Ah, ba ba ba. I guess the naive solution to this would be to just pick some, iterate through each of the positions between 0 and 16 and do the subtraction for each submarine and calculate the fuel until you find a position that uses the least amount of fuel. But then part two is going to kill me with the naive solution, I think. Well, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Day eight, part two is horrible, huh? Hey, Slacks. Hey, NB. Robert. Seed Snipes, are you going to check out the new Godot 4.0? I will. At some point, I will check out the new 
right now. I'm just kind of busy. I've fallen a little behind on these. Day seven looks like it's maybe, oh God. Four digit seven segment displays. On or off the seven segments. The wires are randomly connected. This is interesting. <laughs> it's like we're playing a game of Minesweeper. Smoke basin, lava tubes, smoke flows through the caves, smoke flows to the lowest point of the area it's in. Ooh, height map, interesting, okay. Find the low points. Okay. That doesn't seem too bad. I blind all of them. All of them. The damage is worse than you thought. You bring up a copy of the navigation subsystem. Made of several lines containing chunks. What is the input? Oh, Lord. Okay. If anybody tried doing this with regexes, I'm sure somebody did. Hundred octopuses. Well, yeah, I'm way behind. <clears throat> did my uni degree help me get a job? Well, yeah. I got a job a long time ago, but it only helped me get my first job. That's the truth. Nobody cared after that. Like I got my current job just based on people I knew. They didn't care about my resume at all. But my first job, the degree was very important. <clears throat> if you have a choice between getting a, a job through resumes and applications and interviews or getting a job based on some people that you know and they just know you personally and they think you're a great guy and they want to hire you I recommend number two that second way is much much easier all right that's enough procrastination um, I want to dive into this fix this respawning issue because it's it's annoying me but I'll tell you what I, I was at a Christmas party last night and uh, I'm not 100% right now <clears throat> so we'll see what we what we get I think the solution was uh, yeah you gotta check if the space is clear and we need to make a Medusa avoid that spot so let's do the first part check to make sure the space is actually clear. Right here. So I want to be more cautious here. 
do another check here. Yeah, I'm tired. All right, that's line 202. And then I want to look at this as well. And I think I want to take this code. What is this colliding with? And everything? Shape, query, area objects. Yeah, it just collides with everything, I think. Okay, I want to take this code, I think, and turn it into a method call. And that method call would be um, area objects equals get. <laughs> get overlapping objects 100 because I'm passing in this radius so let's take that and do funk get overlapping objects radius Right, something like that. <clears throat> I don't like this name. Get objects. Get physics get bodies in area in area get bodies in area why not let's try that <coughs> get bodies in area and then it returns a bunch of area objects And then all this thing does is it gets the 2D space of the level, gets the space state, which is the physics state, creates a shape, creates a new physics query, and assigns the shape to the query at this radius, transforms the shape to the player's position. All right. Maybe I need a vector here as well. Position vector two. And then this will be position. Let's call this uh, pause because position is a uh, member variable of this this node. And then this becomes, yeah, and then it does the intersect shape. So now I can say, get overlapping bodies. Get bodies in area of the player within 100 pixels. Get bodies in area. And I pass it the position of the player and 100 pixels. Um... Yeah, that's okay. That's not that's not a bad API. Get bodies in here. I still don't like the name. Get bodies nearby. Get nearby objects. Nearby, get close objects.
What's going to make the most sense to me a week from now? That's, that might be the most descriptive. All right. Anyway, now that I've got this, let me bookmark that. I can put it here, too. And now I can say pause, and I can say... Uh, uh, yeah, it's fine. So now I can do a loop, right, for... No. True. This is getting a little sketchy. So you got to be careful here because if the way how I've written this just now, let's say, look, I'm going to start here. And then I say, look, let's try this position. But then I need to check if there are, if area objects that size is not zero, or if it is zero, then I'd break, right? If I didn't find anything, then we're good. Use this position. But I need to manipulate the position somehow. Some randomness, right? Well, if I keep changing this position by some randomness, it's possible that the position could just walk away and the player would end up being placed maybe even outside of the level <clears throat> so i need to base this randomness within i need to constrain the randomness within within um some area that's close to this just try a bunch of areas that are always nearby this, and they never just randomly walk away. <laughs> well, yeah, while true. While true is true. So this will just loop forever. It's always true. <clears throat> Normally you would do uh, like that, right? Or, you know, while A equals 1, or while... Uh, is flying right but really all, all the while cares about is it collapses all this down into a boolean so that's valid and that just means this will loop forever that'll loop forever your game will crash you'll consume all your cpu cycles and your game will freeze and nothing will happen and you'll have a bad day that's what this break is for Because I could set up a variable out here. I mean, maybe I will. I'm still writing this thing. I don't know. You set up a variable. You know, area objects equals whatever. And then you could say while area objects is not zero, then loop. And then you're changing that value in here. But another way to do it is just to have all your internal stuff. And then when a condition happens, you break. And this will stop the loop. Either way, you have to be careful that your conditions are right so that the loop actually ends at some point. So I think what I need to do is actually do this check first. Um, because I need to check this position and see if it's clear. And then if it's not clear, then actually do the loop. There's no point in doing the loop if it's already clear. Uh, so this could actually be... Like that, right? Uh-huh. So... I get a position, get the objects in that area, 
if it is if it found some objects then we say position Ooh, we, oh god we say new pause new pause equals or let's say yeah that's fine equals pause dot rotated or Pause plus vector two hmm. uh, Rand F no. Rand range. Uh, 50 and 300 dot rotated rand range rand f let's do this one rand f times 2 times pi that why is this bombing on me Vector two matches vector. Oh, okay. So this says uh, if it found something in the area, here's the respawn position. Is there anything in this area? If there is, then keep trying new positions. until there aren't any. And I can actually, I can do this too, and say pause equals new pause. That. I think that would work. I think that's going to make sure I don't ever, the spawn point never actually ends up inside of the boss. And I think maybe the second part I don't need to do because yeah, the second part I might not need to do because at this point where this player is spawning in, it actually physically exists in the world. And so if the if it picks an empty spot and then the boss tries to move over it, he's gonna actually push the player's spawn point. He'll push the player and he'll actually come in at a different spot. So I don't think I need to even do the second part. <clears throat> Let's see if this works. someplace weird, didn't it? Did I, did I just see that? Yeah, it's completely misplaced.
position area, babe. I think it's doing this code, even though I don't think it should be, but maybe it is because it's detecting the player itself as the thing. area objects uh, oh, I should have gotten the first one what am I seeing here interesting. There's some things I want to ignore. Hmm. Strange. Let's see. Let's just make sure that this code is actually working right. So I'm not changing this at all now. is okay. Should be back right there. All right, all right. That's that's fine. That's working fine. Yep, right there. All right. So this code is correct. And then in here it's saying, look, I'm, f I'm finding you a spot, but there's bullets here, so I'm going to move you around a little bit. Move you around a little bit. And... The thing that's confusing me a little bit is this position... these positions don't seem to overlap. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I have any confidence right now. Alright, so there I am, spawning in. Kill me, kill me. I should break. There it is. Area objects. Do I not have area? Do I? No, because it's a local here. 
So it should spawn me here and here and the respawn. Uh, what the heck is this? Oh, teleport. Okay, okay, okay. There's two positions. That's why. This variable just for that so confusing why do I have two variables that do the same thing where's my Respawn position. I don't even need this variable. Whereas this one should be the same as that one. I think this is wrong. I, I don't know how it got this way, but I don't think I even need that. And I can get rid of that. I should see some red. Yeah. This can be respawn dot position. That can be respawn dot position. That can be respawn dot position. That can be respawned in position. Okay, so now at least it's always going to appear where the uh, animation is. Turn that off. Come on. Why does it keep breaking there? Get an exposition set up player. Base nil. Uh, this is why. <laughs> but there should always be one. Should always be one. This is all right. I need to think this through. Put that back. Let's break here. It's null. It's null. And that works. Uh, 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 uh. 
okay? That's why I have two, two variables. All right, so be it. See if that fixes it. And then I get rid of one of those variables confusing me. Perfect. be okay. that fuel barrel was in the way, I think. Yeah, see, it moved me way over here. Those were the three spawn points, but it put me over here. <coughs> where it was uh, clear. Play testing, but I think this might be enough. It moved me way down there, clear of it. The Medusa doesn't move when I'm dead. Uh, the Medusa doesn't move when I'm dead, so I don't need to worry about her flying over me. killed it. I killed it and my killing thing doesn't work. <clears throat> uh, for the boss, I didn't, I didn't give it a way to die yet. Yeah, perfect. I think this works. This is fine. See how it's overlapping all my points there? So it just moves me at some random point nearby. And I'm fine. She doesn't move while while I'm coming back into the game. This is gonna work. Alright, I 
think this problem is solved. Alright, I think that problem solved. Fortunos, oh lord, the screen effects. Are you talking about these? And if you are, then no, those are not stream only. Those are, I see those. They're on my screen. And this, the fireworks down here too. All right, so that that's not the code I was looking at. It's this code. Just need to say light soda. Thanks for the follow. I am working on a game. Or two notes. Thanks for the follow. I'm working on a game. Five cents, not the engine. Here's the game. show you the level editor. I'm very proud of the level editor. Here's my boss level. There's my starting position. Here's my initial dialogue when I spawn into the level. Here's the boss. The Medusa. Uh, this is dialogue for different stages. We can draw in different caves and stuff. Uh, let me open another level. Hmm. And so all the levels are built with this thing. And I can, where's the starting point here? So I can play. I'm gonna turn off those dots. And I can, you know, change the geometry of the level. And then keep playing. I'm very happy with the level editor. <clears throat> I heard a noise. What was that noise? Maybe that was just me. <clears throat> uh, thank you. I'm happy with those tools. So all the levels in Gravity Ace are made with Gravity Ace. And uh, the level editor comes with the game and you can make your own levels if you get bored with the ones I gave you. Just play forever. Share them with your friends. All right. Uh, I want to turn off that debug thing for the dynamic checkpoints that and then I think I can commit let's you know what let's let's play a couple of levels before I commit that just to make sure that it seems to be working in the normal levels as well Hey, hybrid. Welcome back. All right, this is a fun one because you get the reactor core right at the beginning. You have to escort it through the whole, whole thing. I don't like these... Oh, my God. All right, well, this is a test, our first test. We got a crash. What's going on? That was weird. I don't know what happened just then.
Get up there. Oh, man, I missed it. The best way to get it up there is to throw it. But I messed it up. That's too far. There's something going on here. This is this is not working right. And it's doing that because yeah, it's doing that because it's all effed up. I need to make this radius much, much smaller here on the respawn part. Because it's detecting all the cave walls and everything. It's not, it's no bueno. No bueno. I broke the game by pausing during the respawn sequence. <sighs> all kinds of weird bugs now. Get in there. Get in there. Oh, I missed it. Dang it. You also have to throw it correctly. Alright. Bullet color is all wrong. I messed up the bullet color somehow. Okay. And if I'm too close to the wall, what's it going to do then? Yikes, yikes, yikes. The Bite Man. Thanks for following. If 
about a week ago we were just passing 500 subscribers and now we're at like 590 I want to say real close to 600 all right I think I didn't test that very well I ended up uh, just playing through the level instead of actually dying and testing the respawn like I intended uh, but I did find a problem with the bullet color and I, I want to find where I changed that bullet color. I think it was... How do I search? Something about glow. Yeah, here it is. I think this must be when I broke it. And... That is, really? Is that what it was? Yeah, I added a bunch of blue to it, didn't I? Alright, let's look at that. And just change that back to... What was that? Enemies, bullet... Let's just see how it looks. That should, I think, get it back to the way it was before. And then we'll practice dying some more. Yep, that looks right. That looks right. That's better. Spawns look okay. Come here, baby. Hey, I got it that time. Respawn points near laser beams because laser beams are dangerous places to respawn near. Each of these white, big white dots is a respawn point. It's like a dynamic checkpoint. Yeah, that time it moved me out because I was too close to this wall. That seems to be okay. So let's go back to the test level again with the boss and see if that still is okay. Spawn points are, well, they were, they were all covered up by him, but now they're not, so it puts me there, that's fine. They're all covered up by him, er. Again, they're not. It's difficult to test. Alright, 
now they are all covered up. And they put me at this new one, which is not overlapped. But it's still very close, which is okay. That's actually maybe better. I'm just gonna hammer this a couple more times just to uh, just to test. And this may not be a perfect solution, but at least it's working. It seems to be working. seems to be working okay. Alright, I, I like it. <clears throat> so, uh, here, here, right? Every time it updates the position history, it creates one of those dynamic checkpoints. I'm going to turn this off. Uh, it checks if there's anything in the area that it would collide with, and if there is, it doesn't put a checkpoint there. If there are lasers that are too close to it, it doesn't put a checkpoint there. Um, but otherwise it just puts a checkpoint where the player is because the player can only go in valid places, right? The player can only fly in empty space. So as long as it's not cl too close to something dangerous, like a laser beam, it just goes ahead and creates a checkpoint there. And then later, later, when we respawn, it says, yep, give me one of those positions Give me one of those positions, but then check if there's anything within a very small area of it, about ship size. And if there is, then the player's overlapping something that you that wasn't there before. And that is going to be a flying drone or a boss or some kind of bullet, something. And so it's just going to pick a new position somewhere randomly nearby and then check that area yeah until there isn't anything nearby and then it's going to respawn the only trouble with this might be Let's, let's give it a certain number of tries. Right. So it's going to loop here. And it's going to try 10 times. 10 or 11 times. And, um... Yeah, it'll try 10 times. And if it doesn't find a new position within 10 tries, then so be it. It's just going to be where it is. It's going to give up. That way this will never get caught in an infinite loop. It ought to be able to find something within 10 tries. We could say 50 tries. It's gonna try. It's gonna try finding a random position nearby. If it doesn't find it, it's gonna try again, try again, try again, try again. But after 50 tries, it's just gonna give up. That way, the game doesn't end up in an infinite loop, and the player's like, "What is going on? This game sucks." Bugs always turn up where you never expect them to. Interactions of code you just wouldn't think it had happened with. How do you come up with the design? G. G Souts, how do you come up with the design? What design do you mean? Do you mean the code design? Do you mean the game design? Do you mean the art design, sound design? Which which design are you talking about? Happy to answer. Hey, Judd. Judacus. Judicus. Juddy Judd Judd. Welcome back.
<clears throat> ah, I like Spartacus. I am Spartacus. I am Jeticus. Uh, I don't know. We might be having a, a language issue because I, I still don't understand. I, it, so it, the game design itself, I'll just, I'll just try and answer best I can. The game design itself is not really mine. I mean, there's a lot of my decisions that went into this game, but I based the game off of Thrust, which is based off of Gravatar, which is based off of Asteroids and Lunar Lander and all these other games, right? So uh, I, I basically took an old arcade game well, an, an old computer game from the arcade era. Hey, thanks for the follow, Gambit. And modernized it. So a lot of the design was already in place. A lot of the game design was already in place. It was already done, you know, by other people. I just copied them. And then I modernized it. So a lot of the, the like the original game had three lives. And you could shoot one bullet at a time. And... You know, it, it, when you died, you started completely over at the beginning of the level. You had three lives. You know, it was a lot of stuff that doesn't really work today. Uh, so I modernized it. I updated all of those things to make it feel like a more modern game. And then uh, I made decisions to add more and different types of enemies. And uh, I added a puzzle more of a puzzle element to it with the gates, the buttons, the crates. The crates weren't in the original design. So I just, I, I modernized and added a bunch of stuff to it. Why does it keep trying to play a file that's not there? And as far as the code design, um, the game architecture itself is an artifact of how Godot works, really. Godot uses a node, class-based node system where you can have uh, nodes within nodes. Every scene, every node is a scene and you can have scenes within scenes within scenes. And each scene is an object, which is an instance of a class. And those classes have methods and there's inheritance and all that stuff. So the uh, design of the architecture followed that, basically. And then I did all the art. So the art design was just 100% me. I just drew all of that. Uh, the sound design is 100% me. The music, I gave direction to a uh, musician. Uh, Droopy Music made most of the music in the game. There's... I think Act 2, there's going to be some new tracks that I'm going to make. And the track in the trailer is me. And, I mean, there's some of me in the music because I I directed the uh, musician and how, you know, the type of music I wanted. So I kind of designed that, but they had a lot of freedom to do whatever they wanted. And Droopy's a great musician and he came up with a bunch of stuff that I'd have never thought of that sounded great. So... That's game design, code design, art design, music design, sound design. I think I covered all the designs. <laughs> let me know if uh, if that still didn't answer your question, and uh, or let me know if it did. I hope it did. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. Little Ham, hello. Welcome to the stream. Is that a bunny? It's a... It's a rabbit. <laughs> it's a steampunk rabbit. Hi, Little Ham. Welcome to the stream. Alright, I think I'm going to call this bug... Fixed. So cautious to call it fixed. What is this? 
Okay. Okay, that's all that should have changed. Oh, I was looking at a different commit, wasn't I? Yeah. I was looking at a commit from the, in his, back in history, not the current commit. This is the current one. That's all I changed, so that's good. And we're fixing a bug. We're fixing a bug right now. Um, we were fixing a bug where the player's ship, which is controlled by you, obviously, this guy right here, would sometimes respawn inside of the boss. And now, it does not. That's the bug we just fixed. Uh, but we also fixed this color. Uh, fixed enemy bullet color. And, what is this? I'm not going to commit that one yet. This was the refactoring we did for the uh, making sure the area is clear on the respawn. Uh, check if respawn area is clear of objects. And then this was nothing really i just moved i just moved around a couple of things um updated tentacle wrapper uh position and i'm putting ignore here so this doesn't end up in the change log for players but it'll still go on the discord you know, obviously, I still can see it. Are you sinking? There we go. Right. But then when I generate my change log, it won't be in here. Got to do another build soon. Check that off. Check. Phase three shoots gravity at you. to have a gravity projectile and it's going to look different than the gravity wells but it's going to have a lot of the same i mean it's essentially going to be exactly the same but uh you know physically but it needs to have some extra things like it needs to be able to move like a projectile and i think i want them to like shoot out from the boss and then slow down and stop in place and then after a time disintegrate Collapse. Go away. And I, I think I want them to appear visually similar to the gravity wells, but but different. So you'll know what they are, but uh, they won't. You won't be sure exactly what they are. You won't be sure what they're going to do exactly but you'll have an idea yeah 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 okay so we'll need a new a new we'll need a new node yeah because the alternative would be to take something like the gravity well you could take the gravity well and then have an array and as you as the boss generates them, we could just put them in the array. And then the boss could actually control the movement of all the different gravity wells in that array.
but that's a lot of nonsense. I'm not going to do it that way. Will the missile make gravity at the end of their travel? That's a neat idea. Uh, I don't think so, but maybe. Maybe. I mean, the first thing I think I want to do is I want to get this gravity projectile built and shoot some and see how it feels. And then maybe we'll say, you know, it feels weird that they're just coming out of nowhere. Maybe they need to be at the end of a missile. And then we'll try and handle its death state. And then from then on, it's just juice and art to make it look nice. All right, let's do the projectile thing. Close you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. And whoa. Hey, Rockstar. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Apparently, it's a very chill stream where we're doing some Godot engine programming. Free real estate. I, I don't know what that meme is. <laughs> uh, welcome. Uh, I don't know if you guys are game developers or into... Uh, thanks for the follow, guys. Or into uh, Godot Engine or not. Uh, but let me show you the game that we're working on. And I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, uh, what we're working on next. That's the game, Gravity Ace. It's in early access, it comes with 24 levels. You can download it right now. Uh, it's on Steam and Itch. Uh, it comes with a built-in level editor. All the levels in the game were built with Gravity Ace. And uh, it's all in Godot Engine. And right now we're trying to get the boss, we're, we're working on a boss, the Medusa, and we're gonna try and get her to shoot gravity at us in her phase three. There she is. And then we have a lot of playtesting to do, obviously. Um, hey, thanks. Yeah, thanks for dropping in. Thanks for joining. Thanks for the raid. Have a good sleep. Um, all right, so let's take this gravity well as a starting point. And then we're going to save it as boss one gravity bullet. This is going to be a gravity bullet. And don't know if I want it to still be a area 2D, but we'll figure that out. This script needs to change. So I want to make this unique. Save as Gravity bullet GD. All right. And then this is going to be gravity bullet. That. All right. Now we're free to start messing around with this thing. Oh, let's make these. These need to have their own unique um, thingy as well, I think. Do they? These wouldn't reference. I don't think these would reference. Um, A, a 
particle material in another node, right? Oh, hydrate. Thank you. Yeah, the well, the little the little gravity bullets that get shot out, I'm picturing them being very small. They're going to fly out. There's going to be a bunch of them, and they're going to have a random strength. They're either going to be very, very strong repulsors or very, very strong attractors. They'll have a different color. They'll warp space a little differently, and you, it'll make your bullets kind of zigzag, right? You won't know where they're going to go, and you need to be careful flying through them. Uh, you could get caught in one. They're going to make you fly off course. They're going to deflect you into bullets. There's, it's going to be a bad time. So, we'll, you know, we'll, I, I just want to create them and see how they feel in the game. Maybe they suck. Maybe they suck. We'll see. Yeah, so this particles material doesn't reference any particles material in another uh, uh, scene. It's just local to the scene, so that's okay. All right. All right, so we should be all set up. Uh, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Cheers. Ah, uh, cheers, kanpai. Salud. Slancha. Bottoms up. Ooh, <laughs> you want an astronaut named Stanley. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's add an astronaut named Stanley. And Stanley is my dog, if you guys don't know. No, no names. Let's put him in there. Stanley. What should Stanley say? I mean, he's, he's one thing he could say is woof. Are you going to eat that? She? There we go. Those are all things a dog would say. Astronaut Stanley. Good night, Cold Blue. Thanks for joining us. All right, so this thing. You're getting sleepy. All right, this thing's a gravity bullet. <clears throat> Thinking it might be good to, since it's a bullet after all, would be to uh, either turn it into a rigid body And then I could just let the physics system handle it. I could leave it the way it is and just write my own physics for it. It doesn't need to be complicated. Or I could turn it into a kinematic body. It's kind of the same thing. Like if I was going to turn it into a body at all, a physics body, I would want to turn it into a rigid body. Um, and then these things could bounce off of each other. And 
I could use the built-in linear damping and everything. Um, that's kind of why I'm thinking of making it that way. Let's see what that would look like. So if I added a node, called it a rigid body, and I said, make this the root, right? And then I could take these, put them like that. <clears throat> and then this is the uh, gravity, or the, yeah, gravity well. And this is the gravity bullet. script here to here and then the script is going to have a lot of breakage in it because it's not an area 2d anymore it's a rigid body 2d but this sh these references should still all work kind of this would be gravity well. This one's okay. That one's okay. That. Tractor and repulsor are still fine. I need to reconnect these signals. Body entered, body exited here. Go here now. Right. No other signals were connected. And then this guy needs a collision shape. <clears throat> so let's just add one to make the error go away. And it'll be a circle. Okay. Something like that. And... What is he? He's an enemy bullet. And he collides with the player. And player bullets. And enemy bullets. And asteroids. And the world. Gravity well already has its own collision stuff. Okay. So I've got a gravity, I've got an area 2D riding along on a rigid body 2D. And the rigid body 2D can have some physics and it's gonna have some damping. And it's gonna have some angular damping. And it's not going to have any applied forces. And we're going to take these out, I think. Well, I mean, we could leave them in. Let's, let's, but let's change it to, like, something small. Uh, 
No, I think we're going to change it. We're going to remove those. Because I want all the bullets to be the same. I don't want to have to configure each one or do anything weird. So we're going to take that. We're going to make that like that. We're not going to export them. And that's going to be 30. And that's going to be nothing. What is set gravity? Set gravity, set radius. I don't need those. There's just a reset function. What does that reset function do? I don't need these. Uh, oh, it's a bullet, so it needs to be transient. It needs to be in this transient group. I think that's right. Bullet transient, yeah. Transient, the transient group tells me when I go into the level editor, when I switch levels, all these transient objects just get deleted. I need this reset anymore either. I do need some of the functions, but uh, I'm only calling it from ready, so I don't need this. I can just take all of this. Put it here, like that. Okay. So gravity is going to be gravity equals um, 200 if you know, something like that. And that's going to be gravity. This is like a magic function that gets called anytime you change one of the properties. And if the property is gravity, then it changes the gravity. And then it doesn't update to redraw. I don't think I need this. It's like an editor thing. I don't need that. I don't need that. And I don't need these either. And I don't think I'm going to need... I don't think I'm going to need any of this either. I want that. I want that. I don't need... don't need those I'm, I'm kind of I'm so this was all dynamic before right you could change the the size of the gravity well dynamically and it would adjust all these things but these things aren't going to change like that they're going to be constant so I don't need to do that or that or that or that 
And I don't need those either. I'm just going to design them to look the way I want them to look in the editor. It's just randomly going to change the gravity strength. And then show or hide the attractor or the repulsor node. And then I don't think I have anything even calling get strength. So I'm going to delete that. All right, all right, we're getting that. We're getting somewhere. Editor collision, you're right. I don't think I need that. All right, and what do I have in here? This radius is 30. I don't need this either. So I, I just need to design these to look better. So if I want this thing to be about um, let's say 50 pixels, okay, then that means I want this to be about 50 pixels as well. I want to change the size of this thing. That's just a no 2D. Okay, so it's it's just got to be this. I think this is going to be, no, that's fine. Oh, maybe it's the scale. Yep, 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 yep. One to zero. If I do that, right, it's going to be smaller. this texture that it's using. Gravity well textures ring. Let's change that. Uh, gravity well textures ring duplicate no copy Move to duplicate or name. Can I just copy and then paste? No, that didn't work. I want to copy you. Let's just, okay, let's just do it this way. Ring two. And then I'm going to move you up here. And then... Where the heck did you go? In there. And then I'll rename you again. <clears throat> okay, that's fine. And then this is going to use that texture. Mm 
Not this one, but this one. And that guy is what? He's a big ass thing. Okay, so that makes sense that I have to scale it down. Alright, so I, well, I'm looking at my rings. Uh, I'm going to change speed scale to 10. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the swirl. Uh, how does that work? Is is a sphere. Sphere. So I'm going to change that to 50. And do I change the um, speed scale? This is 2. Yeah. Extra hyper. All right. And then the repulsor. Same deal. Rings. Let's do speed scale 10. And change the texture to be the new texture. That one. And its size to be 0.5. And the swirl is going to be speed scale 2. And the radius of that is going to be 50. 25. You're 50. Oh, I see. There's one is going in, one's going... Okay, okay, okay. So that should be 50. This one should actually probably be... This just should be zero, I would think. Yeah. Uh, let's make that a point. And direction be that. No? Is that working? That works. Okay. Fine. So be it. Got my attractor. Got my repulsor. Uh, this has damping on it. It's going to go for a while and then slow down and stop all by itself. And I need a timer. We'll call it the death timer. And the death timer is going to last for 10 seconds. One shot auto start. And when it is done, done I'm going to die I'm going to game dot burst at my global position and then keep free game dot burst gives me a little All right, I think this is the bullet. So over here, we'll have a bullet. I don't like these names, but we'll do a gravity bullet. Grav bullet equals preload. Gravity bullet. seven <clears throat> scale what do I even use this for I 
Let's take that out. I don't think I need it. And we're just going to shoot one. And this is going to be a grav bullet. We're going to shoot in a... Yeah, random direction. Right. And this is going to be grav bullet. This isn't really a speed, because this is becoming an, an applied impulse, so it's more like a force. Uh, but whatever. It results in a speed. Alright, so here... something like this. Aimed bullet or gravity bullet. Alright. So I've got my shoot animation. And I need to make a new animation for gravity bullet. New. So every other shot, it'll shoot aim bullet, which is this animation, which spawns a bunch of bullets. All right, plays a sound and shoots three bullets, or it's gonna do this animation, uh, which shoots a gravity well. Yeah, so that's 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, okay. So, I think what I want to do, we need to add a call track, call that track, and then point three. I'm going to have this shoot. Spawn, gravity bullet right there. And then I'm going to have it shoot another one right here. And another one right here. And... I'm going to have it shoot a... Let's take that out. I'm going to have it call... Spawn aimed bullet one. a little easier. Can I not copy?
Can't copy them from between call tracks. Can't drag them down. Kind of annoying. So it's going to shoot three gravity wells and three aimed bullets kind of overlapping. And then it's going to do uh, this sound, which is what? I don't know what sound that is. <clears throat> gravity bullet. It must be... This one, audio track. Yeah, it's this one. All right, all right. Let's see how it works. Let's see if it works. Da 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 Oh no, I have to put him in phase three. The trouble with testing phase three is getting to phase three. I'm gonna have to um, put in a skip. Phase two. He's got those pesky bullets he's aiming at me now. He's got his gravity well shield up. Got me. You know, like hitting phase three very short. gravity rolls work. There they are. Neat. They're tough. They're impervious. They're not getting very far away from him. Interesting. I think I think they need new art. Oh look, the bullet can push them. I can move them around by shooting them. Because they're in a rigid body. That's kind of fun. Uh, I think this is the wrong radius. Yeah. Oh, wait. That's right. This... This doesn't actually have a radius. It just has this. That's the wrong radius. That's better. 
Okay, they're gonna behave a little better this time. Oh, but let's add a let's do a skip. <clears throat> let's just start him in phase three, shall we? Phase three. We're into phase three. Idle. Because he's not activated. There, there we go. His activation phase should be phase three. So he's in idle right oh. Right now he's an idle. As soon as you get to the level, he's an idle. But then as soon as the player spawns in, he changes phase. So now he'll change to phase three as soon as I'm in. ought to have. Alright, there's a bug. There's a thing. Let's see. Well, I'm gonna go check the chat. Hold on a second, guys. <clears throat> Hybrid lizard named an astronaut. We got the Stanley cam yesterday. We hydrated. We're doing good. We are doing good. He is affected by his own gravity bullets. Yes, he is. Uh, hybrid Lizard. The level counter is per session. Yeah, it's per session. Um, I don't know. I thought about saving this, you know? Oh, thanks for the stretch. We do a, a quick stretch together. It feels good. Thank you. I, I thought about having this saved between sessions. It would be easy enough to do. Um, I don't know. I kind of feel like it does enough. If you don't like the fireworks, you can just turn it off. It's not going to do it anymore. You can ignore it. Um, I don't know. I kind of think... I, I feel like I want a way to... Uh, Hide the panel. If you're not interested in the panel at all, you can hide it. Uh, but then how do you unhide it? I don't know. Like that would be one thing you could do to hide it if you're just not interested in seeing it anymore. And then turn off the fireworks. And then you just ignore it. I don't know. I kind of feel like I'm going to put it out there the way it is. And then if somebody uh, has a strong opinion about it, they can send me a pull request. <sighs> it is a new thing, yeah. So it's tied into the ridiculous coding. But I decided, let's make it a thingy, you know, a bar and experience points we can turn off you can configure it a little bit so you can see i don't i don't want the key sh i don't want the shake i just want to see the keys oh the blips rather the blips but i don't want to see the keys huh. if you see the blips you can't do the keys yeah because the blips are part of the keys i don't know it's it, like i said it's not perfect maybe you just want the sound does that work That doesn't work without the keys. Without the blips. So the blips kind of control the sound and the keys. I should probably remove those. Oh, well, except you can do it that way. I don't know. It, it, it needs some work still, I think. I just haven't messed around with it very much. Blips, keys, and sounds are all kind of interconnected. But to make the keys appear without the blips, I need to refactor this whole thing. I don't know if I want to do that. Hey, good morning. Would 
Luigi mani make it coffee. I love the way you make coffee. That was Mrs. Gravity Ace. She's a lovely and talented human being. All right, so why isn't this going to phase three? Let's just check that and see what's going on. Right, so now it's going to phase three. I'm going to step in there. Phase is phase three, right? That should skip over. That should skip over. Here we go. Into here. It should print out phase three. Right, we're in phase three. And it should play the transition animation. Queue up the phase three animation. Hide the gravity well. Set the shoot timer. We're in phase three now. Kill all the bullets, spawn some fuel. But he's not doing anything. He's not moving. He's not even moving. Why aren't you even moving? Let's see what happens in here. The shoot timer is not running. Why isn't the shoot timer running? Okay, there it is. It thinks it's not alive. Well, how could that be? make the thing alive when you change its phase. If it's an idle, it sets it to false, but then if you go to some other phase, it says it's true. And my original code said, look, you're going to start in phase one. So set it to true there, and you don't have to set it anywhere else. But if I'm skipping phases, I need to, I need to set it everywhere. So uh, Let's try that again. Those should be colliding with anything. I think they're, this collision is doing something funky. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want it in that. And I don't think I want it to do that either. I don't think I want it to collide with anything. The This, yeah, this itself... If it collided with anything, I'd only want it to collide with other ones of itself. Let's try that. Where it's colliding with nothing. It's not on any layers. It's just purely for the movement. The physics movement. Hmm.
Okay, they're working, they're working. Okay, they're not flying very far away. And I think that's because the damping on this is too high. Where the initial force isn't high enough. Let's let's juice this force a little bit. Let's just bump it up to 300 and see what happens. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Still something wrong here. Uh, let's change, what is the scale? Let's just change that to one. Combo the force and the um, damping. I think I want the damping to be higher. And the speed to be also higher. I want it to go quickly out and stop. Like that. Like fireworks. too hyper they are too hyper uh, 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 uh. born to snipe thanks for the follow kazanya thanks for the follow vin vinny maya vin imaya vinny maya thanks for the follow thanks guys Thanks, folks. Oh, yeah. We're at 594 followers. Six more, and we reached 600. It's cool to see other Godot streamers use ridiculous coding more now, too. I know Jitsbo uses it. Uh, I know Mr. Elliptic was using it a little bit. Uh, and they were working on a generic overlay that anybody could use, even if you weren't using Godot, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. It was kind of neat to see uh, Jitsbo using it. And he, he gave me a PR as well. <laughs> Tobias, welcome. Super curious about something, if you don't mind. How is Godot for a commercial project? 
I think Godot is fine for a commercial project. Uh, I'm doing a commercial project and it's great. I love it. It is it perfect for all commercial projects? I don't know. Is it perfect for your commercial project? I don't know. But it works great for me. Um, what are you concerned about as far as being a commercial project? Use Unreal or CryEngine. I mean, it depends on your focus, you know. If, you're, if your goal is to become a uh, professional game developer and you want a job uh, in the industry somewhere, then I would say Godot is not a great engine for commercial project because you need to learn either C++ or C Sharp and you need to either learn Unreal or Unity and that's going to give you the best chances to get a job uh, don't use Godot. If you don't care about that, or you want to get a specifically a Godot job, then obviously Godot would be the best choice for your commercial project because you want to get a job doing Godot programming. So you need to learn Godot. Um, if your concern is porting to other platforms, uh, Godot comes great with comes built in with Mac, Linux, Android, iOS, Windows, support all built in. So that's not a problem. HTML, web, right? Does all of those. So you're covered there. Um, Steam Deck, I think is included. It's essentially just a desktop in a uh, handheld form factor. And if it runs on Steam Desktop, it should run on Steam Deck, so that's no problem. Um, I know that there are companies porting games built in Godot to all the different consoles. Nintendo, Xbox, all that stuff. So that's all totally doable as well. You just need to sign the agreement. Um, get the SDK if you want to do the porting yourself, which wouldn't be too hard. You have the source code for the engine and everything. I don't think that would be an issue. But there are also companies out there that just do the porting for you. It's easy. Depends on what you want to do, man. Godot's a great engine. I love it. Lightweight, fast, easy to use. Uh, better for 2D right now than 3D, but with 4.0, maybe 4.1. The 3D is going to be amazing. <clears throat> Let's do 700 and that. Let's see how those look. Two D is a lot of fun. I'm sure three D is fun as well, and I want to do. Whoa, 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 whoa! Why is he shooting at me so hard? Come at me! Come at me! Come on! You know what? I need to make him stop shooting those bullets at me just so I can test him a little better. Spawn aimed bullet. Return. Just don't shoot those at me right now, please. spread bullets or uh, little gravity wells all over the place. Oh, they're not getting very far. I think this damp is just way too high still. I don't understand how this what this number means. 
that that's my problem. I don't understand what that number means. That's more like it. The hell did it go? Way out there. Alright, what if I change it to two? Or three? Let's change it to three. That, those numbers look good to me. And I don't know why I did it this way. I don't know why I did that. What I should have done was in here, in the gravity bullet animation, just turned off the aimed bullets and the shooting sound. <clears throat> Come at me, Medusa. Still shooting the aimed bullets. Why is that doing that? Yeah, that's fun. Okay. Um, why was it still doing these? It looks like turning off the call method track didn't actually change it didn't actually turn these off. It's kind of an annoying. Maybe that's a bug. How do I... How do I collapse these? There it is. All right. track on or off that should be off off right it's shooting gravity bullet oh it's still doing these that's why okay whatever it's fine <clears throat> it shoots gravity bullets it shoots way more aimed bullets at you um i think it needs to still have its shield on Right, I think I want to keep that on. I want to do this in phase three as well. When it's ready and idle, it's going to be gravity well to hide. It's going to do this. I'll go to phase three, and we'll see a gravity well appear. There it is. And he's going to start shooting his stuff at me. All right, and you're like, holy crap, I can't fly through all this stuff. All right, <clears throat> let's go back into gravity bullet. I think it's too hyperactive. Uh, I think I want to remove that. I want to remove that and I want to add a sprite 2d and we'll call this distortion and that is going to be a uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. posture check thank you thank you untitled you are correct I was slouching Let's move the mic like right here. I'm gonna scoot in, move the mic here. Force me to keep my posture a little better. Everybody should check their posture. All right. So I'm adding a distortion. It needs a texture. Gonna up. 
upload one of my... <laughs> you guys just taking care of me. Water. Uh, I don't know where you are, but give me your uh, cheers from your region. Uh, I'll say cheers. I'll say to your health. I'll say salud. Slancha, kampai. What do they say in Germany? Skull. Is that uh, Norwegian? Swedish? Nazdrawi? Is that... Oh, Prost. Prost. Nazdrawi? That sounds... Russian. <laughs> Ross five is strong. <laughs> Thank you. We're just looking for some happy little, happy little accidents. It's all okay. No matter what you do, it's gonna work out in the end. Just make some choices. Draw some things. It's all gonna be happy. Happy and good. All right. So we've got this distortion. So what this is, is it's a sprite, right? And I've overlaid it on here. But I have a material that I've already built, uh, which is a shader for distortion. And what it does is it just takes that sprite and uses it as a mask for what it's going to distort. And it just sort of warps the, um, what do you call it? The uh, screen space texture. And... It would be nice if my distortion shader had some parameters on it where I can control its strength and stuff. Eh, we'll just see how that looks. <clears throat> tin tin. Tin tin? I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce anything in Portuguese. So I don't know how Tintin is supposed to be pronounced. Is it Tintin or Tintin? 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 Alright. Come on now. Hit me with some gravity. Here's one. So they're a little too subtle now, I think. Yes, I'm certain of it. They're hard to see. They're too... So the, the problem with games, you can't be subtle, right? They're too minimalist. They're just not in your face enough. It's hard to tell where they are. So if I'm going to do that, I'm going to copy it and do a color... Overlay. I'm going to take that distortion material off of it. And then I'm going to change the color. I'm going to add a uh, canvas item material. Instead, do add mode. And then do a modulate on it. Yeah. Something like that. Distortion is just too subtle, I think. <clears throat> Tintin. Oh, yeah, those are fun. You're like, holy crap, what are those? Let go of me. Yike! Oh, I flew right into those. Like a dope.
<clears throat> so pull me in. I think I'm gonna make these things even stronger than they are now. No, I'm still not liking the visuals. Uh, but let's look at the code here. I'm gonna make these even stronger. Uh, let's do that. Hey, we're in the captain's hat. Here we go. All right, captain time. All right, pilots, here we go. Um, I think I want to change this color thingy to be smaller. Like that. Those, those look a little better. They look different enough, but you, you see, you can't really tell, you can't really see the distortion. Can't really see the distortion. And I want to see that distortion. All right. Uh, <laughs> Captain Johnson. You know, we'll, we'll add that. We'll add that. I think I might already be in the game though. Oh, I turned the distortion off. I think I want to add some kind of strength parameter to the distortion. We can do a little shader programming real quick. Yeah, so you can't really tell, right? The distortion is hard to see. Look at, look at how it's moving all of his bullets. It's kind of fun. Let go! Ugh. All right. Let's add. Let's add a quick. Uh, well, let's. Uh, okay. Let's do the astronaut name first. Add an astronaut to the game. So, let me show you. There are astronauts sprinkled all throughout the game. And we will open one of the levels. We'll open this field test level. And we will see some astronauts. We'll put one here. We'll put one here. We'll put here. Dude, here, and we'll put one here, and here, and we'll put one here. Let's put a couple here. They're all hanging out, having fun. One there. How did you get in that hole? My friend, how did you get in that hole? There's those guys. All right. So when we play this level, you can see the astronauts hopping around. And when you rescue them, they um, they say a thing, and they all have a name and a title. Private Kennedy. I was running low on oxygen. Barista Iverson. You gonna eat that? What do we got up here? Oof! Captain Henter. Oh no! My lab experiment. Why are you doing lab experiments? 
I guess he could be captain of the biology lab. Captain's just a rank. It doesn't mean he's in charge of a ship, right? Ooh, how'd you get down there? A xenobiologist. Looking for the espresso machine. Ugh. All right. So, we'll add an astronaut. <clears throat> names. People names. Watson's already in there. Uh, Ted Johnson. Because people may not know that I'm Watson, but they do know Johnson, maybe. Oh, and the catchphrase would be... Uh, have you tried... Ridiculous coding? Pilot? I think of them as pilots, not uh, not soldiers, per se. I don't know if there's a difference, but... Yeah, I like that. All right. Yeah, you can name one Furoy if you wanted to. Just got to keep it clean. We'll add some catchphrases if you want to as well. We can add titles if you want to. If you've got a suitable title. All right, here's some of the titles we have. We could add some funner ones. Not everybody working on a space station is an engineer, right? There's some baristas, there's gardeners, there's a janitor, there's electricians. Right? They're not all colonists or marines or archaeologists or you know, there's a lot of different jobs on a space station. Alright. Let's commit that. So let's do some shader programming real quick. This distortion is not strong enough. So if I look at the distortion shader, uh, let me do this. All right, it's a pretty simple shader. Um, it just warps the UV a little bit by this factor, right? So I need a, a I need a strength that I can multiply that factor by. Like that. And then I can just multiply that by strength. Oops, I did this backwards. So this just multiplies this by one. So there's no change. So everything that's already using this shader won't be any different. Um, but this particular one... Oops. This particular one, I'm going to make it local to this scene. I'm going to change the strength to 10. Whoa. Yeah, that's goofy. Let's see how that looks. I think if I turn that off. Right? It's doing a thing. See, because it's a screen space shader, and because in the editor you can see the collision areas, it's warping the collision areas. In the game, this is what you would see. Which is fun. 25 is too high. That's the default, right? There's no distortion. Zero, right? What does a negative number do? That works, that's fine. Probably exactly the same as the positive number, yep. 10, 
Does some funky stuff. 30. Does some funky stuff. 100. Starting to do nothing. It's getting too big to notice. Uh, I wonder if this strength could affect something else in the shader. Got this factor. Get blurrier. Not sure what this is doing. Jess, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the stream. What if I did that times strength as well? T equals mod time three point plus one times twenty five. one very subtle that's 10 less subtle it's eight six very very not subtle let's do that see how that looks in the game all right thinking caps coming off Shoot me with gravity, please. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They are wobbly wiggly little things, and I'm in them. Ooh. Yeah, that looks cool, doesn't it? How they're interacting like that? Especially where they overlap. TML Turby, thanks for the follow. Oh look, you see how he's flying through it? You can see it distorting him. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, see, that's cool. I dig that. Hard to predict where his bullets are gonna go with all these gravity rolls altering their trajectory. Makes him Hard to dodge. He's shooting extra fast. Yeah, this is a fun phase three. I need a sound effect for these things shooting out. I need a sound effect. Mm, yeah, I need a sound effect. We'll call it boss shoot three. And that's gonna be in here, here. Yeah. So this is a whole, this is a one second animation. Yeah, where he shoots out three bullets. Want that to be there. 
And it starts at 0 0.3, then 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. Maybe I'll even take that out. So it's going to go do, 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 and then do, 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 do. All right, let's, let's do this. Except this one, let's 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 duplicate this. I'm gonna duplicate this. We're gonna call this boss shoot three. Um copy. Boss shoot three. And we're gonna take out that middle one. And this happens at point three and point five. In the game here, this happens at 0.5 and 0.7. So let's move those. I want to move all of these. Let's make this a bit longer. And then this is going to be at, oops. Right there. Right, point five and point seven. Oh, I should have moved them all. How am I selecting this thing? Oh, not sure what happened there. All right, point five, point seven. So the sound's going to be. Okay, now on top of that, I need some kind of sound for the um, gravity wells coming out at 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0 0.7. 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, right? What would be a fun noise? That was actually fun. That was fun. So if we took that here and got rid of all of this preamble here, put it right there at point three. Copy that to here. Something like that. Let's turn off this snapping.
something like that. Seven, five. Yeah. All right, five, like right there. That needs to be back a little bit. There. Three. That needs to be ahead a little bit. That'd be right there. That there. Three. Five. Seven. put these three tracks in a group and we do that submix folder yeah do a folder in this folder I'm gonna just reduce the volume a bit because I want the gravity well sound to be the star of this sound effect something else. I want something else. I want some kind of a like a bubble or a Those are all fun sounds. Trevron looks super clean. Thank you very much. Maybe. any of those. It's kind of a neat sound, actually. I like that sound. You can't tell it's a horse snorting, right?
to there, and another linked copy to there, yeah, and then put the editing marker, the out marker at here, uh, right? And then I need it at 0.5. What were the numbers? 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. You're going to be at 0.5. That is going to be right there. And 0.7. You're going to be right there. And we've got our loop marker out at three. All right. I want to do some kind of uh, some kind of drop, some kind of no, not those. Let's go to another folder. Audio samples. Uh, cinematic. Where is it? Uh, oh, there it is. Cinematic toolkit.
what if, what if I did that there and then linked that there and just took that out to there, what just happened? What just happened? This one to there. Like that. Like that. Like that. Ah, oh, sound effects. shorten all of these a bit. Let's try to get this thing under two seconds. Let's try this. <clears throat> I'm going to export this. File, export, render. It is called Boss Shoot 3 Export 1. Render. And then I'm going to convert it for my game. This is just a step I have to do because I'm using waveform, and waveform puts out wave files in a slightly incompatible format. Um, for games. It's perfect for music production. But it's a non-standard wave format that Godot doesn't quite understand. Boss shoot 3 export 1 is going to go in game. Boss 1 game boss 1 sound effect Boss, shoot, three, that wave. All right, now I have it here. I can delete you, and I can put you right there. Play. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, after all, we can see how it sounds in the game. Not loud enough. What's going on? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Seems fine. Why is it so quiet in the game? Oh, I know why it's so quiet in the game. Duh. Oops. 
It's because I have the options. I have it turned way down. So it, yeah, it was acting a little strange because, whoa, those thrusters, what the heck? Thruster, exhaust particles, heat particles, sprite, distortion, local to scene, one gravity bullet distortion hmm strength seven but if I change it here it changes it here too I thought that's what local to scene did it made it so it doesn't you can have a different version let's do that and here we do make unique seven. All right. And then um, I want this swirl to be, I want these particles to be bigger. I want them to be more visible. So I want these particles to be like, that and these as well. Whoa. Lencius raiding with a party of 14. Welcome everybody. It's trailer time. I think that means it's trailer time. Here's a trailer. Have a trailer. Here's what we're working on. And we're working on some shaders and some stuff. So this is a bullet that shoots gravity. It's a gravity bullet. And we are working on a shader. And I've got a, uh, a uh, distortion on it. All right, we can change the strength. And um, yeah. Um, so, you, you, the, so the boss shoots these right at you and let me turn down the sound again. Oops. Turn down the sound effects a little bit. We just worked on a sound effect, uh, for the, uh, boss shooting these things. And that is here. That's this guy. all this stuff. And that is in here, and we need to change the options, turn on the sound a little bit, let the cursor go. Options, audio, sound. Right. There's our boss, and he's shooting these gravity things at us. Oh, and they're hard to escape from. You got stuck in one. They can do 
deflect bullets. They're dangerous. They look too chunky now. They're, they're too chunky now. So that shouldn't be five. Scaled them up too big. Let's go three. Three. Yeah, that looks better. Aloha, Kilo Nalios, our friend from Greece. How do you say cheers in Greece? What's the what's the uh, drink thing that you say in Greece? And Lencius, I don't know where you are, but what do you say when you cheers someone? In Brazil, they say tin tin. In Germany, they say prost. that mess me up and they make his bullets go all crazy so it's hard to dodge them and it's hard to shoot through these things see that look at that just makes him overall tougher to kill this is his phase three attack here <laughs> get that nonsense all right this is fun i like that i like that To, to our health. Uh, I have no idea how to pronounce uh, 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 Greek. Stin Igea Mas is what my guess is. Stin Igea Mas. Stin Igea Mas. Commodore Furroy. Oh, Commodore is a fun title. All right, we're going to add an asteroid. Thank you, Furroy. So the names and the titles are separate and they're randomized and put together. Um, so we will put Commodore in here. Let's put it next to Admiral. So sometimes we'll get Commodore Furroy and sometimes we'll get Commodore, you know, Jotson. Sometimes we'll get Commodore Ali. And we'll add Furroy. And you can't possibly fail this time. You can't possibly fail this time. Exclamation point. Peri, 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 pericalo, pericalo. Stin, stin gamma, stin gamma, stin gamma, stin gamma. It sounds almost Japanese the way I'm saying it. Itadakimas, kampai. All right. Furoi, Commodore Furoi is in the game. We hydrated and we did Commodore Furroy. Let's commit that. Names Commodore. Yeah. Astronaut Stanley, Astronaut Johnson, Ast Com Commodore Furroy, Astronaut Commodore Furroy. 
Uh, we checked that the respawn area is clear of objects. We fixed the enemy bullet color. And we updated the tentacle grabber position. All right, just some, just some small stuff. I think we're on the verge of doing another commit. I'm gonna fight this guy a little bit. Let's go through a full battle with him. Let's see if we can beat him. Because I think he's got everything now. He's got everything. He knows how to do everything except how to die. Uh, where's my to do list? Right? We just did this. So he just he knows how to do everything except how to die and how to look good. We'll just need to make him more stylish after this. All right. Um, I'm going to put him in phase one. Boss. Okay. Oh, activate. He's going to start in phase one. He's got his health. Shooting all the stuff. We're going to spawn in. We're going to play this level. All right, here we go. We're going to kill a boss. We're going to kill the Medusa. And I need to see how long it takes me as well. My god. Wow. Oh, we need a sound effect right there. Enemy ship on scanners. Take evasive action. I didn't get that gas. I gotta go back and get that gas. Oh my god. There it is. There it is. Oh, that was close. Alright, you gotta remember to get the gas as soon as you spawn into this level, or you're not gonna make it. You're gonna have a bad time. Phase one's pretty easy. Just gotta watch out for those slow moving bullets and just hammer away on them. Yikes. Alright. Phase two, you're doing some damage. Look at that fuel. Yikes. Alright, 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 we're doing good, we're doing good. He's got these, oh, he's got these aimed bullets. We're a minute in. Alright, we're in phase two, we're a minute in. This is a good, this is a good pace, I feel like this is a good pace. Ah, man, those bullets. Being able to do this without dying is going to be tough. Oh, <laughs> that one was my fault. I just flew right into those. Oh, he's got me. He's got me. Get, get. Ugh. Gotta stay away. Gotta stay away from his tentacles. Okay, I gotta remember to shoot and burst so that my shield can re-energize. My shield can stay energized when firing bursts. I like how the, the health bar flashes, so even if he's slightly off screen, I can still know I'm hitting him because the health bar is flashing. Alright, here comes phase three. Oh, I am in phase three. How did I get in phase three? I didn't notice it. I was so concentrated, I didn't notice it. And we're at, a, and we're at two minutes now. So this is good. It's like a minute per phase. Ah. Uh, but I didn't get any fuel. Why didn't I get fuel? Oh my lord. We're gonna fail. Alright, failure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hydrate. It's so noisy. We do. Tintin, tin, everyone. Tintin, tin, Kampai, Prost, Slancha, uh, uh, Stin, Gemas. Yeah. 
to your health. May the ground run red with the blood of your enemies. You know, whatever floats your boat. Thank you. This game, yeah, thank you. It's I sexy might not be the word I use, but yeah, I get I get your sentiment. <laughs> I think it looks good too. I'm proud of it. I did do all the art, yeah. I did 100% of the art. Everything you see in this game, I drew it, I made a particle system for it, I animated it. to check. When he goes to phase three, does he drop fuel? He does. So I just missed it. I just missed it. And I want to put in a sound effect here. Let's put in a sound effect for when he spawns in. Uh, I'm going to go here and we'll create a new edit. Let's close that one. I might want to come back to the boss engine as well because I don't I kind of don't like the way the boss engine sounds right now. It needs more oomph to it or more it needs something more it needs more. Uh but let's create a new edit for the boss one. Um up here. We'll call it. And I think I just wanted to put in one of these uh, one of these cool drops. Let's use that one. This. I want it to last like, yeah, you know, like five seconds or so. a little bit. Feels like I can't even hear this one. It's very subtle. Yeah, it's too subtle. I can't even hear it in the mix. Let's, let's just go with that and see how it feels, and then we'll tweak it. So I'm going to export this, export, render to file, boss one appear, export one, render. And I'm going to convert it again real quick. That's going to be boss one appear. Export one, I'm gonna call it boss up here. Uh mean, what do you mean? Let's call 
was boss. Boss up here. Export. Wow. Export. Boss up here. Export one. Boss up here. Export one. Oh, I have export one twice. All right. Then I can go in here, and I'm going to add a sound effect. We're going to add an audio stream player 2D. I'm going to call it sound effect up here. Put it right here. I'm going to attach... I'm going to rename this to just be boss engine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to rename these to be boss 1. Because eventually I'm going to have a boss 2. And even though they're in separate folders, uh, this will help me in the quick load uh, dialogues and stuff to make sure I'm loading the right one. Uh, I want boss 1 up here to be here. I want this to be on the effects bus. You can hear it from far away. I actually don't want this to be an audio stream player 2D. I just want this to be an audio stream player because I don't care. I don't want it to be positional. Yeah, I don't want it to be positional. You're just going to hear it. You're just going to hear it at full volume. Like that. And that's going to happen... Shake. Shake the world. What does shake the world get called? The world. Oh, boy. Funk. Growl. Here. Dot play. Do I want to do that? I don't know if I want to do that. I've got a transition one, phase one, dead idle, transition one, there it is, shake the world. Yeah, let's just do this. Let's do another call method track. Although, I guess I could do... Yeah, you know what I could do? I could just add, let's do an audio track. We're going to put it on this one. And I'm going to erase that. And I'm going to put it like this. So these will be aligned. Where did I move that? 1.5, 1.5. Let's see. My God. Hmm. As soon as the animation stopped playing and it transitioned, it stopped playing the sound. That's why that's what I was worried about. So I actually don't want that to be a in here like this, because it's it plays this animation, right? But the sound is longer than the animation trans... I want the tr animation to be. And it instantly changes to phase two and the sound stops playing. So I'm going to change this from a audio track. I'm going to change it back to... I'm going to change it to a call method track. And I'm going to have it call here. Growl. Howl. I'm going to have it call howl. I need, to, I need to make this scream. Hey, we're level eight now. Look at that. Yeah, we're going to call it scream. We'll call it, uh, yeah, scream. Scream. So it's going to shake the world and scream at 1.5 seconds in this transition animation. 
then and when the animation is done, it's going to switch to phase one. But because all it did was just trigger this to play, it's going to keep playing. All right, let's see how let's see how it works. My God. Enemy ship on scanners. Take evasive action. I didn't get the gas. Did I? Did I get the gas? Hold on. Let's do this again. I gotta really pay attention to what I'm doing here. I'm trying to playtest this thing. My god. There's the fuel. Yeah, that, that's pretty good. Enemy ship on scanners, he's got me. Get away! Oh, lord. Where is that gas? I didn't get it all. Oh, get away, get away! So this phase, I kind of just hammer him like this and not worry about my shields too much. If I have to let go of the um, fire button for the shield to regenerate. If I fire in bursts, the shield will stay up. But in this initial phase, he's not too dangerous, so I can just hold down the button and be okay. But now in phase two, he drops more fuel. Where is it? X. In phase two, he's more dangerous. So I'm gonna fire in bursts so that my shield stays up to block those things. catch a bullet every once in a while, and I'm fine. I'm firing a burst, my shield keeps regenerating. I'm good. It's going to take a little longer to kill him, because I'm just not holding down the button. It's fine. Different technique for a different phase of life. Still dodging, still managing my fuel. Doing okay there. Now if I get stuck, if he grabs me with one of his tentacles, that's going to use a lot of fuel. If I have to dodge a lot, or if I'm not good at flying this so much, I have to run away like that, it's going to use some fuel. So my fuel's in the red, I'm getting nervous. I'm getting anxious now. There we go, phase three. Get that gas, get that gas. Quick, quick. oh crap. No, 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 no. Ay, 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 ay. anyway. Yikes. 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 And there might be some awesome music playing as well, right? Some kind of boss-specific music. Dun 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 dun. E e e e e e e. Come on, get him. Cause he's health going down, but he's got so much. Whoa! Maybe this last phase you have to be a little more aggressive on the uh, shooting. Ah, we got him. We got him just as I was running out of fuel. It was like two seconds left, and we got him. That worked okay. I think that was a pretty fun boss battle. Ooh, we got a lot of chat going on here. 
tripod vibes. What is tripod? Oh, the sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Transformers sound, yeah. You guys want to hear some Transformers stuff. Check out this. Robots. A lot of fun sound effects in here. I got the, this is the Universal Sound Effects Library. Uh, I got it uh, years ago. Uh, it's this one, but I didn't buy it from, did I get it here? Is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. It's 40 bucks. And they keep adding to it, so I can download a new version now that has more sounds. I just haven't downloaded the new version in a while. But the updates are free. It's pretty great. And then a lot of people are using this, uh, libraries, but, but what you do, what I do, is you end up layering a bunch of sounds on top of each other, like this engine, right? It's just a bunch of different sounds, and all warped and changed and modified, and you play them all over each other. And it makes a new sound effect that is built from those pieces, but it's not actually in that library and you wouldn't recognize it as being in that library. And that's how I do the majority of the sound design for this game. And then this stuff, these samples, where I got these drops and everything, like all the cinematic kit. Uh, where did it go? I lost it again. There it is, cinematic toolkit. These sounds all came from this service called Noise, N-O-I-I-Z. Like all this stuff came from Noise. And Noise is a subscription service. Uh, and it's meant for music production. Can I log in? Do, 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 do. Um, but then once you log in, you get unlimited downloads all the stuff you want to download so you can look for like robot right all this stuff this is industrial kit you can look for uh vocal and then within each one of these kits there's just hundreds of sounds and I think I can choose, yeah, let's do that. Let's see what vocals we got in here. Anyway, lots of, lots of fun sounds in here as well. Elite Dangerous has great sound and music. That's nice. I haven't played Elite Dangerous. I, yeah, I like Elite though. Uh, yeah, this whole the animation timeline. So you can drag sounds onto it, right? So this whole thing, where did it go? An animation player can have tracks for animating any property in the game, for animating three D transforms, for calling methods at certain times. You can call a method in any object in your scene. Uh, you can create Bezier curves for doing, for, and then use those curves for certain things, uh, how you do an animation or whatever. You can do audio playback tracks, and then you can even put in a sub animation track. I'm not sure how that works. I haven't tried this one. 
But when you put in audio tracks, it ends up being kind of like a DAW and you can just drag your audio onto that audio track and just play them along with your animation, which is what I do in here. Right, so when I'm shooting these aimed bullets, I play a sound as well. Right? Or I'm shooting these gravity bullets. Or these guys. So this one's calling method tracks, and another method track, and then an audio track. And all I have to do to do, get all this code to work and all the timing and everything is I just say, play this animation. And all my timings for the calls and this audio, if I wanted to do an animation to synchronize with this, it's all in one place. And I can just adjust the timings by moving them. And my code never has to change. I just say, you know, play gravity bullet. And it does all the shooting. And then I have my call method tracks that actually spawn the bullets. Very powerful animation system. I love the animation player. I use it for a lot of stuff. See it untitled. Discrete and not continuous. Well, oh, so there's two ways to do it, right? Um, like, look at this guy. If you set it to discrete, then you have to put in each frame. Okay, I would have to say, let's just look at it. So I've got this is frame zero and this is frame 11, okay? And if you look at the animation, well, let's look at a different one. That's not a good one to look at. That one's a little hard to see. Let's look at one of the tentacles. Animation player, okay? Uh, default. It's continuous, right? But if I change it to discrete, I've got this frame 11 and this is frame zero, right? And if you look at it, it goes frame zero, frame 11, frame zero, frame 11. It doesn't change in between. So if you wanted frame two to play here, you'd have to add another one, frame two, frame three, frame four, frame five, whatever, right? Just change it to continuous and it, it does all the in-betweens. It just changes the frame for you. So I just put the starting frame and the ending frame, and it linearly interpolates what the frame should be in between. Just makes the animation a lot easier. And if I want it to go faster, I do it like that. Right now it happens in a shorter amount of time. Or I could change the curve here to change the easing a little bit so it, it starts out fast and then slows down towards the end. Or I can do this so it starts out slow and then speeds up towards the end. Uh, I typically will set the starting frame, ending frame, uh, continuous, clamp it at the end so it doesn't loop back around to the start at the end here. And then I control the actual timing in the animation itself. Uh, yeah, this depends on the frames being in the right order. So I, if you look at my animations, that's how I do them. Uh, let's see, tentacle. All right, I've got two animations in this tentacle. But I've got my default animation here, 12 frames, and then I've got another animation here, frame 13 to 24, which is the grabbed animation. And they're just in order. Um, and I can add as many as I want, and I could have different ones, right? But to make it easier on myself, if I ever add new ones, I'm gonna add them to the end. And I'm not going to do any weird frame stuff, you know. And if I want to change the timing of this animation now, I'll actually just redraw it so that the timing works the way I want rather than mess with this. I set uh, my, my workflow typically is I'll set this up one time and then never look at it again. And if I want to change anything about the animation, the timing, anything, then I do it here and just re-export it. Hydrate time. You know, you guys. Hey, oh, hey, Max. How you doing, buddy? Sorry I couldn't make it last night. How was it? Thank you for the hydrate. Hmm. 
And that is the end of my water. You guys are making me drink so much, I'm going to have to go to the bathroom soon. Alright, so we got a little off track there. I think that boss is nice. You know what we need to do is we need to make a commit. Let's do a commit. Mm-hmm. Added. Uh. Uh. Uh, uh, made distortion shader more configurable for extra visual impact. Hmm. Gravity bullets. Yes. Gravity bullet, gravity bullet. I just renamed all of this stuff. So these are all just renames, that's fine. And then this is the all the new boss behavior. And this is a new texture, that's fine. So, Medusa now spawns gravity bullets. They are extra, extra heavy. Again, this goes into my automated change log builder. So I'm writing the chain, the commits in a way that they're fun. They'll be fun to read later. Uh, it's not always just for me. I do write commits in a way that is useful to me as well, um, but I want them to be fun for players. Medusa can shoot gravity bullets. They're extra, extra heavy, see? This is what'll go up on Steam. This will go up on Steam. All right. Wow, we're making good progress. Oh no, do I have a typo? What was the typo? Shake, shake. Oh no, oh no. Yikes. Thank you. All right. Fixed typo. And this one I'm going to be ignore. When I say hashtag ignore on my commit message, it doesn't end up in the public auto-generated change log. Okay. Thank you, Jet. You're a gentleman and a scholar. I appreciate your help. Um, all right. I need to take a quick break. And while I do, you all should battle it out. All you do to join the battle is type sh pew pew or shoot or anything. And I will be back in a moment to see who won.
Oh, oh no. Dang, 10. Max. Hey, Max. Congratulations. Nice. That is natural piloting skill. That is uh, pure talent right there. That wasn't random at all. Yeah. You know what? Maybe we'll take a quick break from... Uh, oh, wow. We got some follows. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Ooh, we're at 598, everybody. Two more, and we hit the 600 number. Pusty Pie, thank you for following me. Pronged, pronged, thank you for following. Uh, TML Turby, thanks for the follow. Trevron, thanks for the follow. Just St. Pierre, thanks for the follow. You guys are great. Appreciate it. Wow, we got 57 people in here. Holy moly. Um, I'm going to play the trailer real quick. I didn't realize there were so many folks in here. And maybe um, you don't know what we're working on, so let me show you the game. It is a, oh, the gravity's low. Yeah, it, 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 the uh, gra sounds a little low, yeah. I had the sound a little low in the trailer so I can talk over it. Uh, sometimes I do, uh, but I didn't this time. Anyway, that's the game. Uh, it's a 2D retro inspired arcade cave flying shooting game with gravity physics. And it, there are levels that are a little puzzly. There are levels that are a little shooty. And um, it's in early access right now. It's got the f whole first campaign. And what we're working on, what we've been working on for the past couple of weeks is a boss to end the first campaign. And enemies and other things to put into the second campaign. And then we're getting to the point where I need to actually start making those second campaign levels. So pretty soon we're going to transition into level design. Not today. But over the next week or two, we're going to transition into level design for campaign two. And we're working towards getting out of early access, essentially. Here's my to-do list. I've got 14 launch tasks remaining to get out of early access. One is finishing this boss. That's what's in progress right now. And to finish the boss, we've done, I think, just about all the code. We need to handle death. He needs to do something when he dies. And then we need to put in, actually we've done that. I kind of want a big ass beam laser, but maybe that'll be the boss. Maybe that could be the boss. That could be the second boss. I still need to make another boss for campaign two. The second boss could be all lasery. I can't use all my tricks on one boss, right? Let's call that done. So this is, I need to have a little bit of code for handling the death and giving the player some points. Uh, I need to then add some visual stuff, animations, chunks flying off of him. Just juice it, right, in general. Um, more, more cohesive sound, you know, tweak the parameters of how th he flies around. Um, better animation, more animation. Um, and then he'll be done. So this is all visual stuff at this point, I think, here. This is a tiny bit of code. This is more visual. And then I need to change the game over screen so that it, you know, if you leave the combat zone, you get a mission fail. If you fail to defeat the boss, that 
might need a special screen, but you definitely need a screen for when you do succeed in defeating the boss. Um, oh, the boss needs to drop a reactor. Drop a reactor core when destroyed. That's the other thing he needs to do. Well, that's part of handle death, I guess, but I want to make a note of it so I make sure I don't forget it. So you'll blow him up. You'll get some points. There'll be an amazing animation. He'll drop a reactor core. You'll grab it. You'll escape. You'll get the campaign one defeated thing, and you'll get some sort of, I don't know, crawl that you know, explains how great you are. And then you can go into campaign two. And then, of course, campaign two will be all the levels. Intro crawl. I want to add new enemy. Another new enemy. I've already added several. I've added a bunch of mechanics and fun stuff for campaign two already. But I want to do some more stuff. And then act two boss. Then once all that's done, the, done then the game will be essentially complete. Um, I'll be able to set a launch date at that point once once act two boss is complete i'll be able to pick a launch date and i'm hoping it'll be soon ish in the spring sometime i'm thinking and between finishing the game and launching i'm going to do another art pass on everything just polish everything up a little bit more do a, uh, an art pass on the menus and the menu buttons the whole ui needs a overhaul i feel like i'll be making a new release trailer some new logos for Steam. And then it'll be done. The game will be done. It'll be done. <laughs> and then once it's released, I'm going to take a break for a month. Maybe two. Maybe I'll work on other stuff. But at some point, I'm going to want to come back and do some updates. And one of those updates will be Bananas for Bullets. You know, uh, unicorn ship, um, and maybe an, another area of content for um, campaign three would come out maybe in Christmas time or something. There's lots of stuff that I could still do, right? There's an act three I could do. Um, I could do trading cards, right? I could do I could do Steam achievements. That could all come out post release. Tons and tons of stuff I could do as a like a free update or DLC. But this is all I need to do to get out of early access. And I'm getting closer every day. Uh, I don't know how many hours of gameplay there will be. I think right now it's maybe an hour or two. It depends on how talented you are, really. Some people are going to finish it much quicker than other people. Um, I know when we had some people speedrunning it, some friends of mine were speedrunning it, and I think they were speedrunning the whole first campaign at just, I mean, they were going fast. At like... Um, what was it, like 30, 35 minutes, something like that? So a normal player, I think, would take three or four times as long. Um, you know, I mean, these were experts, right? They're flying through, blowing up everything, going as fast as they can. They, they'd already known all the timings for fuel and shooting things. They already knew where everything was. They'd get through it without dying as quickly as possible. Expert high-level play. You could do the whole thing in 35 minutes. Uh, normal play is going to be 60 to 120 minutes for each campaign. So, yeah, at least, yeah. So, yeah, Mac, maybe Max is right, like three to six hours right now. It just depends, you know, on where you are. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm predicting there's going to be a lot of people who play it, and after... 30 minutes or so, they're going to be like, this game sucks. It's not for me. It's too hard. I quit. And they're going to get their refund. And that's fine. It's not for everybody. Uh, 
ba, 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 ba. I do enjoy working on the game. Part of the reason I do game development, uh, I mentioned this on a, a couple different interviews. Uh, I did. I, I mentioned this on the the uh, Go 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 Godo Jam interview I did last month. One of the reasons I do game development is because I like doing art, and I like doing music, and I like doing programming. And I'm not particularly good at the music or art. Um, and, but I like doing them. But doing music is not something that I want to do professionally. And doing art is not really something I want to do professionally maybe but I like dabbling you know and I've become better at them <clears throat> I think I'm much better at music and art than I was um, at, at least this particular style but so game development lets me do all three of those things in one activity basically I can I can do music I can do art I can do programming and it kind of combines all my hobbies into one thing and then uh on top of that, it's actually something that people will pay me money for, which is a bonus. No, I am itching to work on a new project for sure. Um, Max and I, I hope, are going to start picking up a new project soon. Or re-pick up a project that we started. Right, Max? Um, but yeah, I, I do, I mean, for me, I, you know, it's one of the ways I keep motivated on something is, um, I need to enjoy it. And that's part of the reason why I don't follow a really efficient workflow. I, I can't just gray box stuff forever. I have to actually polish the art before the thing is even done. Otherwise I just don't feel any motivation to keep working on it. So I interleave the, the activities. And I also take breaks and I work on other stuff, you know, kind of recharge the batteries, you know. And I, f I really do believe that you need to take some breaks. You need to take some breaks. You come back to it after a break, you come back to it refreshed. You come back to it with new eyes. You can see the flaws that you didn't notice before. You can see things from a new perspective, a fresh perspective. Taking breaks is essential if you want to do this on your own and not go crazy, I think. So yeah, I will be making other, other stuff after this, but I'm going to take a break before I do. Um, maybe we should take... So I've already committed everything, right? This is my, my tree is clean. Yeah, we're good there. Why did it change that resource number? understand what it just did. Did I accidentally change something? Let me just undo that. Let's go in here and work on something slightly different. So I wanted to, this is my bot for the stream, actually. It's written in Godot. Um, it has all of, it has Twitch integration. 
So I know when rewards get redeemed, when channel points get redeemed. I know when chat messages come in. And I know when commands happen. And there are some special commands like battle, which only I can run. And other commands that everybody can run. Aliases, all this stuff, right? And then the command format is here. It's just JSON format. Right? So if you typed in event, you're going to see that. Which is true. And if you're in the area, you should definitely come by. Tickets are free. There's going to be a ton of games there. We have the whole back patio of Ambitious Ales in uh, Long Beach. It is family friendly. Uh, you do not have to be 21 or older to go. It is a tap room, not a bar. So it's very swanky, fancy, nice, clean, well lit. Wonderful family friendly environment. You can bring your kids if you want to. If you're under 18, that's fine. And uh, tickets are free. And there's going to be a bunch of us demoing our games there. And there's going to be another group of us all drawing the games. There's a, a drawing group that we're partnering up with. They're going to bring their people. And they're going to be drawing different scenes from the games. We're going to have, I don't know, maybe there'll be a raffle. And there's going to be food. There's a bunch of places nearby to eat. You can order pizza. There's usually some kind of food truck or some kind of, uh, you know, taco stand or something there, which is delicious. And I will be there and I hope to see you there if you can make it, if you're in the area. If you're in Southern California on January 12th, come by. Uh, so, one thing I wanted this to do was be able to dynamically reload the commands. And right now it only loads the commands when the thing runs. But I think I want to also reload when the file changes. How would that work? I mean, I could just do it right here. Chat message, login attempt. Commands, does add command, 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 chat, action, command, chat. I could add a special command. Maybe. Oh yeah, swim from Greece. Hey, Wallaber, the person you want to talk to is Max. Max Axa. Um, Max, you there? How can uh, how can Wallaber get a hold of you? Yeah, Kilo, you could swim. I mean, I'd take a plane, but yeah, swim if you like. If you swim here, I will uh, buy you a fresh Speedo to wear on the way back when you swim back. <laughs> um, Wallaber. I will. How do I do this?
Uh, I don't know how to send you a private message, Wallaber. You know what? DM me on Twitter. And I'll send you some info there. Yeah, I'm Yaft on Twitter. So DM me there and we can we can talk. I'll get you in touch with Max. He's organizing it. <clears throat> and if anybody else is interested in uh if you're in the area you want to present something at the at the thing. I, I I can't guarantee anything. We have limited space, there's only so many spots, blah blah blah. But I'll get you in touch with the right people and we can figure it out. The more the merrier, I say. Especially if you can bring some friends or help get the word out about the event because we want lots of people to come. It's always more fun the more people that come. Oh, really? Well, you know who's going to be there. Vim's going to be there as well. <clears throat> I don't know if it'll be streamed. That would be a good idea. Um... That would be a fun idea. Maybe we'll all stream it, actually. Yeah, so Wallaber, Vim played your game. Vim's gonna be there at this event. It would be cool. You could meet him in person and experience his uh, blazing white aura in real life. You can't look directly at him in real life because you'll go blind. You need to wear um, sunglasses because of his fame. That's what happens when you, when you meet a... Uh, partner level Twitch streamer in real life. You you kind of have to avert your eyes a little bit. <clears throat> uh, no, he's a cool guy. Uh, him and I have been friends for a couple years. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, if we could stream it, that would be cool. I'll mention that to Max. Uh, I think what we might do is we just have everybody... Maybe we'll set up a Twitch channel specifically for the event. But maybe we'll also just all stream it from our own point of view, from on our own streams too. That could be fun. Uh, 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 I need to write a note to myself to remember to do that. How do I do that? Oh crap, how do I do that? Being on stream makes things so difficult sometimes. <clears throat> You know what I should do? I should just go into Discord and do it. Because that's where I communicate with everybody. Hola. You want to say hi to everybody? No? It's like 50 people in here. Um, somebody had... Right idea to stream Ambitious Indies 3.0. What do you think? All right, done. Now I will have a discussion with my with Max later about it. <laughs> you can't see her, but Mrs. Gravity Ace is right here. My lovely and talented wife, who I love dearly. Oh yeah, There's, there she is. <laughs> she says hi. What are you talking about today? What was the time I just ran out? No, what are you talking about today? Oh, I'm just the game, building the game. Yeah, same as always. We did work on tentacles. We did work tentacles. We did some tentacle work. We did some technical tentacle work on the gravity grabbers. <laughs> yeah, Judd says you're Admiral Ace. Yeah. I'm just a uh, crewman. <laughs> yeoman. Yeah. I'm the yeoman. Yeah, I'll bring you the paper to sign. Here you go. I'll wear the short skirt and everything. Here you go. I'm short skirt. <laughs> All right. Um, so where were we? I think. I, I think I want to add a 
so the one thing I found was that when I'm adding commands to the bot, I don't want to have to restart the bot, right? So I want to add a reload command. Um, so I want to do this. And I'll say reload commands. And reload commands. And the action will be reload commands. And the streamer is going to be... Streamer true means only I can do it. And then in here, I'll just check for that action. If command is reload commands, then command reload commands. And command reload commands. Is going to say... Actually, it shouldn't really do anything except this. It should just do this. Yeah, that's all it needs to do. Yeah, and then I'll have it do... Uh, uh, do command commands that as well <clears throat> so I'll reload the commands and then it'll just print this out again here's all the commands you could do okay and, and then the other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to make it so that the battle the bots in the battle were a little smarter so I've got a battle scene and the battle scene does some stuff and in here there's the AI for the for the ships Uh, let's see all this stuff I used to let you actually turn your ship left right forward shoot but the latency is so high that it's not super useful um, where's the AI there it is so this AI function gets called Every once in a while, what what does it get called? There it is. So in physics process, right? It just calls the AI over and over and over again. And the AI, this AI function, all it does is it calls each ship's AI, right? For each player. So it gets the username of that player, gets the ship for that user, and calls that ship's AI. And that ship AI is in here. There it is. So this is what this is the dumb AI. Randomly turns and thrusts forward, moves forward, fires its engine. This is one out of every hundred and fifty. Okay, so this gets called every physics frame, okay? Which is happens 60 times a second. So this effectively means um, the odds of the engine firing are 60 out of one, or yeah, one over 150 times 60, 60 over 150. So 40% chance it's gonna fire the engine. And then a 60% chance it's gonna turn, 50% chance it'll turn left, 50% chance it'll turn right. And then a 60% chance it'll shoot as well. So this could be smarter, right? It could also detect if it's point if it's facing a wall. And if it's facing a wall, don't don't shoot. Or even better. If it's facing a player, shoot. And if it's facing a wall, turn. Let's try that. Let's try that. Um, so I think I want to add a... 
I don't know, some kind of ray cast to the sky. Can I add a cone shaped ray cast? I don't think I can. I mean, it's in the name, right? The ray cast is just a ray. It doesn't have a shape, right? Right, it doesn't have a shape. It doesn't have a thickness. Um, I could add a... I could add a Area 2D. Like that. And then this could have a shape. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then this collision shape could be... Something like this, right? Why can't I... What is wrong with this? Um, this is what I want. Collision polygon. Uh, and then I want to be able to say, like... Here... Right? Something like this. Right? I'm just going to eyeball it. It looks okay. So if, if there's something in this cone, he's going to shoot. That's the idea. Yeah. Shoot cone. Aim cone. If there's something... If something enters the cone... Ah, this is a pain in the neck. You know what? I'm not going to do that. Let's do this. I'm going to do an, a ray cast because this is going to be easier. <laughs> I'm not sure. Oops. But I'm going to change the method here. Because the... the oh, shit. The problem with that Area 2D is that you detect when something enters the Area 2D. And you detect when they leave the Area 2D. But you don't detect if they're still in the Area 2D. You need to add extra code for that. Whereas a ray cast... Ray cast. A ray cast, it's just going to tell you every single time you ask it, am I hitting something now? Am I hitting something now? And I want to cast this out to 200, say. Let's say even, because I think the screen's running at 960. Let's go 480, right? This, is, this will be half a screen. Yeah, and it'll collide with those. And that's the layer the ships are on. And it's not going to collide with its own self. And I'm going to enable it. You always have to re remember to enable your raycasts. You can't, I can't tell you the number of times that I've actually been like written all the code and done the raycasts. I'm like, why isn't it working? Why isn't it working? It's because you got to turn it on. They're off by default. It's just a decision that engine developers made. It doesn't do anything by default. Turn it on. Hey, Tobias, welcome back. Um, All right, it's not cone shaped, but that's okay because the players are big, right? Ish. And I can do something with the ray cast where I'm actually like aiming it a little bit. I can, I can kind of sweep it a little bit. So in the, in here, in here, do I need this? 
think this battle thing is overcomplicated. I don't think I need this. I'm calling AI each tick. Each physics tick. Right? Physics process calls AI. And I'm, all I'm doing is I'm getting a reference to the ship. But actually, I don't need this, I don't think. I can remove this. I think the reason I had this, this is a legacy issue. I had this here because I had the AI written here before. But that I moved the AI into the ship. I can just erase that. And I can erase this. The red should all go away. Yeah, red's gone. And then just have the AI here. Like this. Where's my physics process, right? I can just put it just put it right here. I can even do that. What is this? Let's get rid of that. So some, a lot of this code I wrote it a long time ago. Uh, okay, no, I, I have to keep that, I have to keep that. All right, so what's happening here is I say shoot three, and then the shoot method I think doesn't do anything, or it shoots one. Where is it? It shoots one. It says, here's how many you're going to shoot. Three, right? And then... There's a wait timer. If the timer is stopped, then it goes to negative. It goes down. And then it calls this again. Now it's going to shoot two. Shoots two. It goes down. Now it's going to shoot one. It goes down. Shoots one. Okay, so this helps it shoot in sequence, one, two, three, one, two, three, however many bullets there are at with a point one second interval between each one. Okay, so I need this. I need this. I just didn't understand what it was doing until I refreshed my memory because I named it wrong. I named it wrong and I didn't comment it. And I'm not gonna do it right now because I don't feel like it. Yeah, I think yeah, I think the issue. Well, I don't know if recasting is actually expensive. I suppose if you had a bunch of them, it is. But I've done some uh, benchmarking with physics queries, and a typical physics query runs in something like twenty microseconds, which is like twenty millionths of a second. They're very very fast. The engine is extremely fast, so. I suppose if you had a bunch of them, though, I don't know. I'm not worried about it. So so he's going to shoot. He's going to do his thing, right? Uh, physics process runs at 60 times a second. Okay. So this says every 150th, it's going to have a 1 in 150 chance of doing this. But times 60 frames per second, which means it's going to have 60 of those chances each second which is a 60 in 150.4 40 percent chance per second or a one in 150 chance per frame that it'll do this and then i want to do a thing where i move the uh ray cast change ray casting and i'm going to do something simple like uh 
does this have a rotation on it? It does. So I'm gonna just do something simple like um, aim raycast dot rotation <coughs> equals sign um, engine dot get frames get ticks os dot ticks milliseconds so this will go between negative one and one on a sine wave and I'm going to multiply that by like uh, 0 0.1 times pi which is 18 degrees so it'll go kind of where 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 positive 18 negative 18 degrees right and then I can check if Not random, but if aim raycast dot is colliding, shoot. So now if he if he sees someone, he's gonna shoot at their current position, which means I think we'll get more hits. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna run. Bot. I'm going to run the debug version of the bot. And then we'll do a battle. Hey! Alright, somebody get in here and shoot me. Wow, that's wrong. He's shooting because he's hitting the... Um, the raycast is hitting the uh, the walls. Royal Inn followed me. Ibeji followed me. I have 601 followers. That means I, I, I Ibeji Ibeji was my 600th follower. Thank you, Ibeji. Uh, thank you, Royal Inn. Thank you, everybody who followed me today, and everybody who followed me before. Now we're at 600. That's amazing. That dude, that one dude. Thank you for the follow. Everybody, thank you for following me. Uh, thank you for helping me reach 600 followers. We're now at 602, 50 viewers, 602 followers. Uh, amazing. Yes, we will put on the captain's hat to celebrate. And I think we had a stretch in there as well. Let me check my, my activity queue over here. Captain's hat incoming. And a stretch. Oh, you know, my dog stretches every time he gets up and then he stretches again every time he sits down. I think he knows something. He knows something I don't know. But he does it every time. <clears throat> Stretching never feels bad. I, I don't know of any downside. And yet, I never do it. But I should do it. Ba, 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 ba. All right, so I want these collisions. <clears throat> oh, wait, no. These walls. I have everything in the same thing. So I want these to be, let's put them in layer two. How about that? Layer two. Layer two. And layer two. The ships are going to be in layer one, and then my ship is going to collide with layer one and two, but he's in layer one. And bullets 
are going to be in layer one, but they're also going to collide with layer one and two. And then the ray cast is going to be, he only collides with layer one. So he shouldn't collide with the walls anymore. All right. I think I might I might be able to just stop this. Reconnect. Do the battle again. Yeah, so he's not shooting now. Right. So the walls aren't triggering his shooting behavior now. But when these two get within half a screen of each other, they should shoot. They see each other. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> They're more deadly now. Uh oh. Oh, that's that's not the game. Oh yeah. Much more deadly now. Hey, Tobias. Yeah, you just, you just say something and then your ship appears. So you're down there in the corner. You're down there. And then the ships use AI to uh, fly themselves. Yeah, you just say anything. And what we just did was we made it so that the um, the ships are a little bit more intelligent about when they pull the trigger. Let's add a variable here that says on target. This is an interesting, I mean, maybe this is interesting to some of you, but this is uh, how you make AI in games. Uh, we'll say, let's change this to on target, right? And we'll say, where on target equals, okay? If the raycast is colliding with something, we're on target. If you're on target, shoot. If not, if, if, yeah, if not on target, then we'll do this stuff, okay? So if you're on target, he's going to shoot. He'll still randomly turn on his engine. If he's on target, he'll shoot. If he's not on target, he might turn. But if he's on target, he's not going to turn. He'll stop turning. That will hopefully keep him and help him stay on target. I'm going to restart the battle again. I wonder if I need to. Maybe just saving this would fix fixes it. That updates the code. Alright, let's start the battle again. Hey, Royal Inn. Kilo, yeah, this is an overlay window. It's uh, it's just a game window. Here's the actual window. See? But it's got a transparent background. And then I have OBS streaming just the contents of this window and expanding it to the full screen size. And then I just minimize it so you can't see it. And now you've got the transparent window overlaid on in OBS. Right? There it is. Gravity OBS right there. That's the overlay. <clears throat> um, and you can make a you can make the window transparent pretty easily. Easily, I think I have a helper. Helper, help. Where where the heck is it? 
Thought I had a helper scene. Here it is. Set transparent. This is how you set the transparent background in your window. There's also a uh, setting. You need to allow per pixel transparency and enable per pixel transparency on the window. And then you can change the window to be a transparent background. Yeah, and then you can make cool overlays. All right, so we've got shooting. We've got him staying on target. I wanna add one more thing to make him a little smarter. Um, when he collides with something, I want him to turn around. So, um, ship, node, body entered. Ah, okay, so it does know if it hit a wall it turns off its thruster. Um, I can't remember how to get this. There's a way to get the normal of the collision. Do rigid body collision normal. <laughs> Good job, Tobias. Hey, man, everybody needs a win. I did it in the other in my other project. I'm just gonna load Gravity Ace. Figure out how I did it in Gravity Ace. And then copy it. Normal. Body get direct state of this body. This is how you do it. Okay. All right, so when the ship hits the wall, right? I can get the physics state of this body, right? Which is, you reference it by resource IDs and I'm gonna take off the hat. Thank you. That's coming off. Put that back on, right? Um, Every, every physics body has a resource ID, which you, has a method here for getting it, right? So I'm passing it in the ship's resource ID and saying to get direct state, which returns the physics state of this body, okay? Then I can say get the contact count. Uh, and I don't care about that. If there's a contact, and there should be because I've just done this, then I can get the normal of that contact. And I just want to print it. Just to make sure where it's happening. And it turns off the thrust. All right, let's run that. Connect. Whoa, screen went away. All right. Uh, and then battle. And we'll see what happens when he runs into a wall. He should stop and it should print out the um, contact normal. Bonk. Contact. Zero one. Which is right. That's a vector pointing straight down. He was going almost straight up. Yeah, all the, all the normal should be at 90 degrees. 
because the walls are perfectly orthogonal. Yeah, that's zero and negative one. That's pointing up. Perfect. So I know exactly which wall I hit and which way to get back into the game. Um, how do I get him to turn? How do I get him to turn indeed? is have him turn like this. Turn left, turn right. What is this number? For a duration. That's interesting. Um, yeah, let's just have him turn, right? We'll just have him turn. Um, Whatever the duration is, let's have him say, uh, if Rand F less than 0 0.5, then turn left for half a second, else turn right for half a second. Let's see how that works. Hit a wall, and he turns. Hit a wall, he turns. Hit a wall. And it's not quite. It's not quite working. Let's say that. Bonk. One is too much. Back to. Six. Darcio. Help me debug my bot. What I really want him to do is maybe... is maybe flip back towards the center. Maybe I don't even want the contact normal. I just want to go back towards the middle of the screen. Yeah, maybe that's what I want. Um, maybe I don't want that at all. Maybe I just want... <clears throat> Let's get the normal, but I also have my own angle, right? I have my own vector, um, and that's ver heading equals um, vector to rotated rotation, right? So I'm heading that direction, and then there's a normal. Do I care about the difference between these? I don't think so. And then there's a center. Uh, oh, that's what I need. That's what I need. Where to uh, vector is center um, minus position, right? That's the vector back to the center. Vector to center equals center, right? And then, whoa. Center equals... 960, right? Something like that, but 
and we can do better than that. Uh, height. Here we go. I've already got it in helper. So I've got helper dot width and helper dot height. Right, so I've got my normal, I've got my center, I've got my vector to center, which is just the center minus my current position normalized. Yeah, and then I want to rotation to center equals uh, uh, Vector two, one gonna zero that rotated rotation dot angle two vector to center and then I can say call deferred I don't know if this is going to work. It's close. Uh, set. Rotation. No. I think I need to set transform. Yeah. Let's go back to my other project real quick. I need to copy some code. Actually, let's not do that. We'll do it this way. Uh, who do I do this with? I do it with, I think ship actually. Oops. Editor transform, that's what I'm looking for. State.transform. Yeah. Integrate forces might be useful. I wonder if I'm doing that in here. Integrate. Oh, that's bullet. Integrate forces. I am. Okay. 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 Uh, am I using this anywhere? No. Let's call this transform. And then in integrate forces, I can just say, I'll explain this in a second. Uh, I'm just deeply concentrating. I want to do this. All right, so here's the thing. If you have a rigid body, physics body of some kind, you can't just move it, okay? If you just move it, there's two simulations going on. There's a visual simulation and there's a physics simulation. And if you just move its position, then you'll have moved it, but its current position will be out of sync with the physics simulation. The way you move rigid bodies is they interact with physics, there's a whole physics server, and the physics server is updating the physics simulation, its rotation and position in the physics simulation, and then those properties get replicated into the visual simulation. The only time it's safe to make a change in the physics simulation is in one of the physics methods, physics process or integrate forces. Okay, So what I've done here is when the ship hits a wall, I'm calculating how it needs to rotate to point away from the wall. 
Then I update this transform variable, and that transform will contain a rotation that it needs to rotate to face towards the center of the board and its current position. Okay, that's what this transform 2D is. And then in integrate forces, I just check where it's safe to change the physics state. If there's a transform, then use it and then clear it. So I'll set the transform someplace and then here where it's safe, this gets called every physics frame. It'll update the transform and then carry on. So it should, when it hits a wall now, flip, everything will stay in sync with the physics and the visual simulation. We should be good to go. Let's see what happens. Battle. If I've done this right, when he hits the wall, he should flip around, pointing towards the center. Nope, I did it wrong. He did a flip. Did something. Oh, psych. It's weird. It looks like it, it starts to work and then it stops. Dink, nothing. Maybe my math is just wrong. Let's try something simpler. Um, let's just say zero. Zero should mean point to the right, and it, it did, it worked. When he hits this top wall, he should point to the right. He did, right? Perfect. I'm just doing my math wrong here. Right? And then this would be uh, I. This would be 180, so it'll point to the left. Maybe, maybe I don't need any of this stuff. I just did this. Normal dot angle. Now it'll just point away. It'll rotate itself instantly away from that wall. Doink. Yeah. So they're always facing inward towards the center of the arena. Works. Boink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boink. Doink. Doink. They're not perfect, but they're a little smarter than they were. Oh, man. Oh. Tobias winning again. Scanning, scanning, scanning. Boom. Yikes. Turn, no, you turn the wrong way. Shoot. Ah.
Nice. You. You can say anything. When you chat, your ship joins the battle. When you die, your ship leaves the battle until you chat again. And uh, I like saying pew pew to bring the ship back in. And then the battles last for three minutes. And you can see who's winning by the crown that they're wearing on their head. So this AI is a little smarter. Don't know why he's shooting like a crazy maniac right now. Um, yeah, there you go. So they kind of shoot when uh, closer when you think they should more often, right? Before it was like it would sweep in front of a player and he wouldn't shoot. I was like, can't you see? Now they'll now with the raycast they'll shoot. And let's visualize that raycast real quick, actually. Visible collision shapes. Let's do that. This will be fun. And we'll be able to see the raycast, how it's aiming. Yeah, see that raycast? That's his aim. That is much too wide of, a, of an aim. That's too much. I'm going to make his aim a little more slow and a little more of a tighter beam. And this is going to be a little slower. Oh, that doesn't look right at all. It's off. Uh, oh, this should be here. Duh. There we go. There we go. That looks better. There's the raycast. There we go. There we go. That's kind of what I was expecting to see. See his little feelers? So he's got a little antenna. <laughs> it works. Uh, oh, is gravity is coming from Mac? Probably not, no. It, Mac is too hard to develop for. Mac, Apple makes things too difficult for me. Sorry. I just don't have a handy Mac I can use here. You need Mac hardware to do the, all the signing and everything. Uh, you need to pay Apple $100 a year just to be one of their developers. And then when you build it, you have to actually build the project on a Mac, which totally throws off my whole development flow. Uh, plus, they've all just switched to that whole metal new api for graphics so there's going to be all new bugs because it's all brand new and nobody really there haven't been a lot of games for it yet uh like godot i think will support it in 4.0 but i don't know how well it's going to work it's apple has made things really really hard for game developers especially indie game developers who don't have a lot of time so no sorry No, it's not that simple. Once you When you build for Windows, it is that simple. There's one button. I push one button, and I get a Linux build. I get a Windows build. And I get a Mac build. Okay. But then, for the Mac build, it has to be signed. And to do the signing, you have to then take your build over to a Mac computer. You have to download Xcode. You have to pay Apple $100. You have to do this whole signing thing. Then you upload your build. And it's a pain in the ass. I'm just... I don't like Apple that much. Um, I wish it was easier. If it was easier to support, I would definitely do it, but it's not. There is a Mac build on itch right now. 
Um, I don't know if it actually works because I don't know very many people who use a Mac. And it probably is going to throw all kinds of warnings up at you saying, this thing's unsigned. Are you really sure? It's dangerous, whatever. Uh, but I think in the newer versions of Mac OS, it's just not going to work. Um, yeah. Steam Deck, I think it will work on. We've actually got uh, the Godot engine developers. Uh, they have a Steam Deck. They got one of the early dev kits, I think. And so they're actively testing Godot engine on the Steam Deck. And they'll be able to say, yes, if you build your game with Godot, it'll work on the Steam Deck. So that I'm not worried about. You like that? In, you like the way that antenna looks? It's pretty cool. I think I'm going to shorten. I think I'm going to shorten its visibility range. Make that raycast a little shorter. Let's make it like 360 instead. So they can't see as far. Now you have to be a little closer to your opponent before it'll see it. I mean, I could make it really short, like point blank. That could be fun. See how see how it's changing in real time as I change this number? I love that about Godot. Boom. Yeah, life choices. It definitely runs on Windows. It'll, I, it, I'm pretty confident it'll work on the Steam Deck. Uh, it works on Linux. It works on laptops, Windows laptops, Linux laptops. The uh, the game itself is pretty low spec. It doesn't require a lot of um, high performance or anything. It should even run on integrated graphics cards. You don't need a dedicated graphics to run it. It's just a 2D game. Simple. Doink. Doink. Oh! Right up the tailpipe. Yes, Solar Jet Man is definitely in this genre. This game is based on Thrust, which came out, uh, I think, something like four, four or five years before Jet Man. Uh, Solar Jet Man is also based on Thrust. They're both based on Gravatar. Pixel Junk Shooters in that um, genre as well. Uh, Oids is in that genre. Um, yeah. There's a bunch. There's a bunch of games in this kind of genre. <sighs> well, thank you. I think that would be great. <clears throat> uh, I appreciate it. All the support I get. I, I, I will I will take all the help and support I can get. Thank you very much. All right, I think that's that's it for the bot. I think that's what we're going to do for the bot right now. So he knows when he's on target. He knows when to shoot. He knows when he's not on target. He just keeps going in a straight line. But if he's if he's on target, he'll keep going in the direction he's going. But if he's not on target, then he'll turn randomly. And then if he hits a wall, he'll transform his his facing to point away from that wall based on the contact normal and we can actually not do that that would be fine yeah that would be fine all right i'm going to commit this Battle, GD, yeah. Refactored the AI. Change the collision layers. Yeah, we'll just call this made the AI. Made battle AI. A little smarter. And then we'll build a copy of this. So we'll do a build. I'm only doing a Linux build in this case because I'm only running it locally, so I don't care. Export a release version. Uh, 
Let's turn off that. And then I can cancel that and then go and run the actual release version of this here. And that's going to be there, right? Connect. I hope I'm not seeing anything. Uh, there we go. Um, <clears throat> do I play or wait for any other games made in Godot? I actually just did a Kickstarter, uh, or I supported a Kickstarter. I didn't do the Kickstarter. Um, Films of Fury. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I just supported these guys. This is a Godot game, actually. An action roguelike. And it looks just juicy and fun. You know what? This reminds me of... I don't know. Nuclear Throne. Um, what do you call it? Uh, Gauntlet. You guys remember Gauntlet? So this co-op mode reminds me of Gauntlet. It just looks like fun. Anyway, I, I backed them and they got their... They reached their goal. Uh, so this will be fun. I can't wait to see that one. <clears throat> hey, Boomerstick. Howdy. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Will the game have co-op? It's rare to find co-op games these days. It will kind of have co-op. Sort of. <laughs> so right now, you can play the single-player campaign with two controllers. There's only one ship. But you might split up the duties. So one of you can fly and the other one of you could shoot. You know, there's a turret to aim, right? So one of you could be right stick and one of you could be left stick. Both controllers work to control the same character. Uh, you could use keyboard and mouse too. So one of you could be uh, tractor beam. One of you could be uh, turning and aiming. And one of you could be shooting. You know, you could have that kind of co-op. I also want to add a mode where you have uh, a small arena. And two of you just face off in this arena. Two to four, I guess. Local multiplayer in a small arena and you're flying around shooting each other i think that would be a lot of fun single screen no scrolling you just see the whole screen and you're both on the screen you're flying around you're trying to shoot each other there's a gravity well maybe there's some rocks you can hide behind and you're chasing each other around the screen shooting each other i think that'll be fun um but i haven't gotten around to those modes i think they're going to be post-release content basically Uh, Rocket Bot Royale. I have not seen Rocket Bot Royale. Co-op missions, yeah. I mean, yeah. I. It's a neat idea, but it changes everything about the game. Right now, the game is balanced for single player. And if you add co-op then you need to rebalance the whole thing. And again, I'm just doing this by myself. So it's probably not, that's probably not gonna happen.
There is no difference between the Steam and the Itch version. Theek. Theek? 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 TH? Yeah, there's no difference currently between the Steam and the Itch version. I might add cloud saves, and I might add achievements to the Steam version. Maybe. And in that case, there would be that difference, but there's not going to be any functional difference between them. I'm trying to support both. You know, I'm trying to make it platform agnostic, I guess you could say. All right. So I think that's done. That was a nice little break. We made the bot a little smarter. It has a command now to reload. Let's make sure that works. What did I call it? Reload commands. There it is. All right, so there's all the commands. And if I change the commands, say I add a new command. Let's call it the Judd. Do the Judicus. Oh yeah, baby. And then I do reload commands again. I should have the Judd in here. There it is. Oh yeah, baby. So that works. Cool. All right. Hey, I can't say that name. WME, welcome. Thanks for the follow. You guys, we made it to 605 followers this stream. Uh, thank you to everybody, all 605 of you. Uh, appreciate it. WME, thank you. Mellow Hype, thank you. Mocha Ferris, thank you. Dat One Dude, thank you. Royal Inn, Ibeji, Pusty Pie, Pronged. TML Turby, Trevin, Jess, Born to Snipe, Kazajna, Kazanya, Viney, Cold Blue Mist, Jens, Rockstar, Gambit Trader, The Bite Man, Fortunos, Light Soda. Sheesh, you guys all just follow me today. Thank you, appreciate it. 605 followers. 44 viewers, and I think I'm out of steam. So we did some work on the, whoa. And VRAM, thank you for the follow, appreciate it. Uh, we did some a bunch of stuff on the boss today, and I feel really good about it. I think we've got all of his shooting, all of his phases, all done. I, next stream, Monday, uh, we'll work on his death. Make sure that all works functionally. Dropping the reactor core in his death. And then we're going to start working on art, animation, juicing it up a little bit, making it look cooler, funner, more interactive. And there's a bunch of stuff that's going to go into that. A lot of it's going to be drawing, animation, that sort of stuff. And then we'll get to move him over to the review column and let him, let him stew a little bit in his own juices. And when we're happy with it, we'll move it to done. And in the meanwhile, we'll work on this other stuff and then make this list get smaller and smaller. I think once this is done and these are done, and I don't think these will take very much time, then we'll actually start working on this. Well, all three of these. The boss one level, the boss one intro level, and the act two levels. And I've already started on this one. I think this one is the one we've just been playing. So that one's already started as well. And then and then we can actually start act two proper. Right? This stuff. And then yeah, and then we'll be really close to being done with the game. And and then since I've got this guy done, right, I can use him as a base. This this guy took a long time because I've never made a boss before. I didn't really know how to do it. But now I've got a good pattern for it, and I can just copy him for boss two, and then change some things. Change his art, change his animations, 
make him do some interesting different stuff but a lot of the challenges and stuff I had to do f to learn to do this one I won't have to do again and so boss 2 I think will go much quicker and then and then the game will be effectively releasable and done and I'll be able to choose a release date and while I'm waiting for my release date to arrive I can do some extra stuff art polish finish the trailer that sort of stuff I'm feeling really good about the the spot I'm in right now. I'm feeling pretty happy. All right. And then we worked on the bot a little bit. And that was fun too. It was a nice little break. Uh, I like taking breaks. Let's see who's out there to raid, shall we? Uh, who's online? Well, Untitled Game Studios is online. Indicate is online. Lindsay's is off. Creating a commercial 3D action survival. They should tag their stream Godot. Oh, he did. And then Untitled. What is this? Okay. Okay. Interesting. Playing a game. I must run. See, now it's this guy. Fuck it. He's just Oh, this so looks like fun. Very close to this, you can see that they have very Godot 4.0. Um, probably also Let's go raid Zadutch. Uh, yeah, he's using Godot 4.0 to do some kind of 3D thing. Okay, so um, and he's speaking English. So this is all a bonus. Let's go see this person. Um, I'm gonna start the raid. Thank you very much, everybody, for dropping in. If you don't know the game, go to gravityace.com. You can find links to all the things. Uh, every every one of you has been helping me um, uh, today, and I really appreciate it. Uh, there's a Discord. The game's out on Steam. It's in early access right now. You can go to gravityace.com, see trailers. It's on itch. Join me on my Discord. You can ask me questions, follow me on Twitter, do all that stuff. It's great. I appreciate all the help, support you can get. Tell all your friends about the game. And right now, we're going to go over and raid this guy. When we get there, say hey, ask him what he's up to, and uh, let's find out about Godot 4.0. I will see you guys again Monday. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great weekend, everybody.